Well, it's well after 6.30. Uh, there is a quorum present, so I am going to call uh, this meeting to order. Uh, and I would like to begin by asking Constable LaPierre uh, to lead us in the pledge. If you have a hat, would you please remove it uh, and please stand. Thank you for coming this evening. I'm sorry, what? Oh, there you go. Okay, the, the only thing I'd like to say tonight is, you know, a lot of folks do things and um, they're not recognized by a lot of folks. And I just want to bring a few things to your attention tonight. And one of those is, um, we all have uh, new annual town reports and uh, they came out very nice. Every year our town administrative assistant, Karen, puts this report together. And I just want to say I think she does a fine job and I want to thank you, Karen, for your hard work and dedication on that. It's a very nice report. Okay, and, and, and finally, the other thing I'd like to acknowledge, acknowledge is uh, yesterday, we had one of our first auctions in recent memory. I mean, I, I never remember one. And uh, I'd just like to thank our treasurer, Amy, who has done a tremendous job and worked very diligently to uh, have this work done. And as I understand it, we were able to collect upwards of $177,000. And we've taken these properties off um, off a tax title and they're now owned again and we'll be paying property. So thank you, Amy. Uh, I have witnessed the constable's return of the warrant, so this is a properly called town meeting. Uh, I would like uh, to have a motion, preferably unan by unanimous consent, to allow the town manager, the town council, town accountant, uh, police chief, uh, be allowed to speak at this meeting. Uh, does anybody object to that? Hearing none, those individuals may speak. Is there anybody else here that is not a citizen of the town of Brookfield or a voter of the town of Brookfield that, that might need to speak? Oh, there he is. Ryan from the highway department. Uh, is there any objection to Ryan speaking before the town meeting if that were to come to pass? Hearing none, uh, those individuals can speak. Thank you very much. All right, um, as I begin most meetings, I'd like to read uh, the rules that I am going to be running this meeting by. So, there are limits to debate. Each member who wishes to speak on a motion has no more than two minutes. Each member can speak two times on each given motion, but may not speak a second time on any motion until everyone else wishing to speak on a given side of the question has had an opportunity to speak. Time limits are overall. If you ask a question, the answer comes from your time. Rude, disrespectful speech will not be tolerated. Also, Remarks attacking the character of an individual, including statements that someone has an agenda or ulterior motives, will be called out of order. We have constables here to escort you out if you think otherwise. Applauding, cheering, booing, or otherwise expressing approval or disapproval are not permitted. All debate or questions are directed to the moderator, me. Pre Previous question or the motion to close debate once made and adopted ends debate and it doesn't matter if the line at the microphone is going out the door. Debate is done. 
Um, in debate, I will attempt to alternate between supporting and opposing uh, viewpoints as best I possibly can, given the limitations of the microphone. We are here to make decisions about the town of Brookfield. Decisions are made by making motions, debating, and voting. No one should speak unless they are engaged in one of those three things after being recognized by me. You should look to address the town meeting either in support or opposition to a motion. You can certainly ask questions during debate, but please keep questions and debate focused on the motion at hand. And again, if you ask a question, the answer will come out of your time. If someone has stolen your thunder and made the point that you wanted to make, please refrain from repeating it. If a point has been made, I may ask you to either bring a new point or to stop. If, I think, if you think that I'm doing something wrong uh, or something else you can't hear or something's going on, uh, please just raise a point of order or jump up and say, hey, I can't hear or whatever, uh, and just let me know and, and I'll address that when that comes up. Finally, uh, in the past, we've come across motions, uh, we've come across an article where no motion is made. We have used the so-called motion to pass over. No such motion exists. Furthermore, there is no reason for town meeting to take any action when there is no motion. Therefore, if you have a warrant article that you've decided to withdraw or have no motion, just tell me there's no motion or better yet, just stay silent and I will move on to the next article. Are there any questions about anything that I said? Good evening, Mr. Moderator. Dave Holcraft here. Um, yeah, here. here. It's, it's on. You pull, pull, pull the pull the whole stand up, Dave. Just, there you go. Bingo. Can you hear me now? Speak loudly. It's on. Speak loudly. It is on. It is on. It's on now. Okay, Dave Holcraft here. Uh, Mr. Moderator, could you uh, have a request? If, if there's people at the microphone and the question gets moved, is there some way you could change your mind and let the people speak that are at the microphone and then, and then move the question? So if people are at the microphone and somebody decides to move the question and, the, and, the, and it passes, I think the people at the microphone should be able to speak. That's the way the meetings have been in the past, and I think it's only good for the people. If they come here and they're at the microphone, they should be able to speak. I know that that has been one time in the past. I will not allow that. Okay. Uh, one other thing is I'm filming this meeting, so I'm just letting everybody know that I am filming according to the state law and knowledge, acknowledging that to everyone here tonight. Everybody understand, uh, Mr. Holcraft is taping the meeting. Good. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Article one. Who's gonna make a motion? Anybody? Come to the, come to the microphone. Yeah. Okay, I make a motion um, for, to accept the annual town report of the town officials as printed. I'll repeat the motion. Okay. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I make a motion to accept the annual report of the town officials as printed. There's been a motion made to accept the annual report of town officials as printed. Is there a second? Second. second. There is a second. Is there any debate on the motion to accept the annual town report? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The town report has been adopted. Article number two. So I just need to ask a question. Could you guys in the back hear her? No. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to repeat the motion. That's fine. Okay. I heard it, so we're we're good. Uh, a motion has been made to see if the town will raise and appropriate nine million. 
$966,177.99 to defray the expenses of town for fiscal year 2024 as shown in the fiscal year 24 budget contained in the annotated warrant and as recommended by the select board. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Okay. So uh, I got a couple. I got some instructions that I want to give you on how we're going to handle the budget. Um, so I'm not going to go through this line by line and ask for holds and then go back and revisit them. Okay. All I'm going to do is to go through the warrant book, the last eight pages of the warrant book have the budget. There are no real line numbers on this. There are account numbers, but they're very long and tedious. So what I, all I want to do is I want to go through this page by page, and if somebody wants to make an amendment to the select board's recommendation, because those are the numbers that we are basing this on, okay, the select board's recommendation, that column, those are the numbers we're talking about, okay, and if you want to change one of those numbers, uh, come to the microphone uh, and make an amendment to strike the number that's there uh, and, and insert uh, whatever number it is that you want it to be. Okay, does everybody understand uh, what we're going to do here? Um, let me just make sure. So you're, you're certainly welcome to ask questions, but I would please uh, ask you, if you're going to ask some questions, please have in mind uh, a, 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 the, the idea that you want to amend the line item uh, just to avoid a lot of questions that you know you could have gotten at the advisory board or, or something like that okay I don't want to take a lot of time just answering questions if you have a question about an item because you think that maybe there's something wrong with it or you'd like to change it and depending on the answer you're going to make a motion to change it then please come forward you're certainly welcome to ask questions but please keep in mind that this is going to take a little bit of a time and I just want to save as much time as possible okay everybody clear on how we're going to do this can you come to the microphone don't worry, I'll repeat as best I can whatever she says, so. If we make an amendment, and so we have to come up and we have to give an amended number. Now, do we have to explain why we want to amend that figure, or will you do that after they're all read? You, we're going to take it up right then and there. So oh, if you come to the microphone and you want to strike a number and insert another one, yep. we're going to take it up right then and there. Okay, all right. Thank you. And town accountant is going to be keeping track of everything. So at the bottom, so when we're all done, she's going to give me a nice figure that we're all going to vote on in the end. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Excellent. All right. So um, starting with the, the first page of the budget uh, in the warrant book, is there anyone that would like to amend uh, any of the recommendations of the select board? Okay, going to page two. So it's complicated. I'll give you some time to flip it through and do whatever. Is there any one? What's that? Oh, you want to go back to the first page? Okay. You need to come to the microphone if you want to do something. If you could say your name and yep, Jake Hill and uh, Jake, uh, before you before you go, just tell me, give me the description of the line. You don't have to give me the account number. I don't want just tell us what line you're on from the description. Total technology. Total technology. Okay, for seventy nine thousand ninety nine dollars. Correct. Okay. Seventy six. Seventy six. So, I'm sorry, seventy six thousand ninety nine dollars. Correct. Thank you. I do have a question as far as possibly making an amendment in that the the uh, maintenance of thirty thousand, I think it was twenty nine something that's listed earlier in the page twenty nine thousand nine hundred eighty seven. 
if we could get further detail as far as what that maintenance entails. Okay, so the question is, in this line, there's approximately $30,000, I think you said, for maintenance, and uh, he's asking for a description of what that includes. Is there somebody that could give us a description of what that includes? Hi, Kel Kelly Robbins, town administrator. Um, if you flip the page, there's a breakdown of what that includes. So the maintenance includes the configuration settings into connections, networks, servers. Okay, hold on. You, you pull that microphone good and close to you and speak good and loud. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm being very gentle. Oh, yeah, but be bold and brave. <laughs> All right, so if you look at what is... Uh, uh, hey, hold on. Can you, can you hear them? you got to go louder. Can, you can't hear, can you hear me now? Is that better? Okay. So if you flip the page, you'll see a breakdown and you'll see that the computer maintenance is handled by Enevery. Um, this is our endpoint detection response. It man they manage all of the configuration, settings, interconnections, network servers, server devices, accessories, installations, migration, inventory, records, monitoring, security, backups, account users, passwords, resets, emails. Um, they maintain our tech and repair it as necessary. They provide live support. They optimize our tech for reliability, security, speed, efficiency in that order according to industry standards. They make recommendations on improvements. Um, and then it lists what each of the computers has. So you have your computer as a local copy. They manage that. They do the... the um, They clone to the server. They they basically manage everything that's on this page. So. Yeah, fair enough. On online, I don't think this was included. It had the breakdown. I didn't see this. So now that I see this. Yeah, it actually I, this okay. was printed okay. from the online. Okay. So I didn't, I yeah. didn't see it right, right there. So I didn't start the timer. So do, so are you all set? I'm all set. Thanks. Awesome. That's golden. Anything else on the first page? We kind of went back to the first page of the budget. Okay. Anything else on the first page? Okay, let's go to the second page. Anything on the second page? Again, we're looking at the select board's recommendation. Okay, I'm going to move on. I do want you, oh, we do have a question. And while she's making her way up, if you discover something after we've gone by the page, feel free to tell me that, hey, wait a second, I want to go back, okay? Until we vote on the final number, it's open. Oh, go ahead. I would like to amend the town clerk salary to $50,033.71. Hold on a second. What was that number? $50,000. $50,033.71. And I have, did I have here? Okay, hold on one second. So you want to strike $43,833.71 yeah. and insert $50,033.71. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, is, is, is there a second to this? Second. Okay, there's a second. Go ahead, Linda. The, the town clerk has been Hold here. that microphone okay. good and close. The, ta the town good. clerk has been here with us for 14 years. People do not realize the duties of the town clerk because I was the former town clerk. The town clerk is responsible for all of the census of the community. He has to, pr he has to do um, a residence list for the school. He has to also give a list for the jury commissioner. He oversees all of the election. He prepares the ballots, he administers campaign finance, certifies nomination papers, and supervises voter registration and absentee ballots. Licenses, he issues state licenses, permits including marriage licenses, permits for, for bazaars, he issues local permits and certificates as mandated by the bylaw which includes business certificates, dog licenses, and kennel licenses. 
local boards and committees. He administers the oath of office to all elected and appointed members of the local boards and committee. He informs in writing all elected and appointed officials about the state open meeting and conflict of interest laws, and he posts all of the meetings of all boards. Official decision of duties, records, and he certifies all of all the records of the town meeting. And all of the appropriations, Microphone. appropriations that need to be sent in to the Department of Revenue. He does planning board decisions, certifies all notes for borrowing. He's the keeper of the seal and records and state tax liens. Public records. He provides access to public records to comply with Massachusetts general law, certifies copies of all town records, records and preserves original birth, yet 30 seconds. marriage, and deaths. He provides certified copies of and conducts assisted genealogy research and he provides input to the Massachusetts Central Voter Registration System. He has a lot of um, a lot of responsibilities, plus he has to maintain the gateway system of the births and deaths. A lot of people just think that the town clerk does dog licenses and a few other licenses, but he has he's responsible to every town in this every department Time's in this up. town. Okay. So I hope people will consider this because they really don't realize the job okay. of the town clerk. Good. Thank you. Is there any further debate on the on the question? Uh, and the question is, by the way, uh, to amend the town clerk's salary by striking forty-three thousand eight hundred thirty-three dollars and seventy-one cents and inserting fifty thousand thirty-three dollars and seventy-one cents. Uh, is there any further discussion on the motion to amend this line item? Mr. Moderator. Yes. Can I be heard in the back? No. Can I be heard in the back now? Yes. All right. Mr. Moderator, through you, I'd like to ask a question. Ms. Lincoln, is that allowed? Uh, yeah, it comes out of your time. That is fine. Ms. Lincoln, do you have any information on salaries of town clerks in comparable jurisdictions, um, towns of the same population size and the same load? Because I would like to think that um, if that I would hope that we're paying him fairly, and if we're not, I would like to understand that. <coughs> You, you can't hear you. Hold that good and high and it's, it's, it's not on. It's not on. It's got the green, so hang on one second. Do a test. Testing one, two, three. No, she's gonna have to hold my cousin. Step right up to it there. I haven't had a whole time to research this, but I can tell you the town of East Brookfield, which is a comparable, pretty much size to us, they have a town clerk down there who is new, and she is making $52,000 a year. And then you're going to go hire an assistant library director, and you're going to pay Mike only $10,000 more than she's making, and this is a new position. And he's grossly underpaid and I feel that he deserves a raise. Because people do not realize the responsibility that the town clerk has. Without a town clerk, you cannot run your town. You have more? Hmm. Uh, Mr. Moderator, th I'd like to say thank you to Ms. Lincoln. Um, I, my understanding is that a com analysis of comparables to the assistant library director was done and across many towns, and that was done. Uh, we're talking about the town clerk here, I, so library directors is not pertinent to the question, please. Thank um, you. Uh, Ms. Lincoln brought it up. I thought I would respond uh, to that, Yes, I, I, I kind of allowed it, but I, I really don't want to go that direction. Okay. So. Then I would just point out that uh, for the other positions for which large raises have been done, um, significant studies of comparable towns have been done, and I, my thought is I would like to know, I would like to do a greater analysis and have more detail before deciding, uh, before allocating this raise. Well, I disagree with you. I don't know if Mike has anything to say on this, but uh, um, I don't so, know if so, Mike has anything to say on this, but other communities are making much more money than Mike. I have done the salary when I was town clerk, I always did salary surveys, but everybody said it was the size of the town. But it doesn't make any difference because everyone has the same amount of work to do. Okay, time's up. Did you have a question? Sure. No, I was. Speak on it. Go ahead. 
All right, Mr. Moderator, through you. Um, uh, just so that for everybody's awareness, and, it, and we'd have to check with other towns, but uh, our, our current schedule, as I understand it, for the town clerk is 24 hours weekly. Uh, so based on the scheduled hours, uh, I'm of the opinion that it's, it's currently a, a fair salary. You have one more opportunity to speak. You say that it's 24 hours. Mr. Seary works more than 24 hours. You may day. speak to me. Well, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. In a small community like Brookfield, we know the townspeople, and if they call us up here on a weekend or a weekday when we are not open, we will come up here and we meet the people of the community because we care about the people. Mr. Seary cares about the people in this community and is willing to help them out in any way that he can help them out. So it's not a 20... 24 hour a week position because a lot of times you're on call seven days a week because people will call you at home and they will ask you to help them and if you know these people you don't want to turn these towns people down is there any further debate on the question Okay, uh, the motion is to amend town clerk salary from $43,833.71 to $50,033.71. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. I think we should, I think we should count, I'm sorry. I think we should count. Uh, I, I, I think the yeas had it, but uh, uh, so tellers or constables, all those in favor please stand. All those in favor, please stand. All those in favor of amending the town clerk salary uh, to $50,033.71, please stand. and you said 45 all right you may be seated all those who are opposed please stand voted no. Uh, the ayes have it. The, the uh, town court salary has been amended to $50,033.71. $50, Point of order. Uh, Point of order. Do you need a second for that motion? We did, go, we did ask for a second. It was seconded. It was seconded. Thank you. Um, all right then. Anything else on the second page? Yeah, I got a question on the, well, I'm gonna make it a motion to, um, on the collector salary. Um, I wanna go from uh, 58,449 to $49,084. Um, the reason this is- Oh, hold on one second. Um, okay, so the line that I read is 58,000, right now it's currently sitting at $58,444.26 and you want to make it again, what was the number, $49,000? $84. even? That's correct. Okay. Is there a second? Is there a second? There's a second. Okay. All right, can I continue? Yeah. 
Um, the advisory board gave her an extra six hours years ago, I think it was 015, um, to work 34 hours. She is now working 28 hours. That's about $180 per week extra for not working. Um, we don't have her working Wednesday nights. She used to work Fridays. And now she's coming in at 10 o'clock instead of nine instead of nine o'clock. It breaks down to 28 hours. Uh, this is one of the reasons we're going to have a. We're talking about making an appointed position. Um, this is what's going on, and it's a bonus of $180 a week. And I don't think it's fair to the rest of the workers at the town hall. And that is my motion. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Hi, oh, Brenda Paris, the town. Good morning, well, Brenda. Be bald. Oh yeah, I, love I know myself. it stinks. Um, I want to clarify. I work 32 hours a week. I worked. I work nine to usually five or six sometimes. I, Clarence suggested long ago that I open at 10 and leave in close at four. Most of the days the town hall is locked at four, anyway, and this gives me a chance to go to the bank, which is always of 45 minutes to an hour trek because we don't have a bank in town so but i am always doing 32 hours a week okay so good anybody else all right the motion on the floor uh is to amend uh, the collector's salary from $58,444.26 to $49,084 uh, all those in favor say aye uh, all those opposed say no. No. Uh, the no's have it. Uh, the motion is not adopted. Is there anything else on the second page? Okay, I'm going to move to the third. If you change your minds, let me know. Any amendments for the third page? Starts with planning board expenses at 2,000 bucks and ends with total fire department at $159,357 and change. Any amendments on page three? No, oh, this is looking better. I was getting a little worried there. All right, moving to page four again. If you see something as we move along and you want to go back, I'm more than happy to do that. All right. Page four starts with telephone contract leases for eight thousand and total planning total parking tickets of a whopping three hundred and thirty three dollars. Any amendments on page number four? Yeah, I know they're not numbered, they're numbered for me and uh it's uh, the pages aren't numbered, I'm sorry. It's small, I didn't print it, so I'm not sorry. But, okay, the next page starts with three warden expenses at 12,400 and ends with snow and ice, 77,405 bucks. <coughs> Anybody want to make an amendment? <coughs> Okay, let's go to the next page. I'm calling it page six. It starts with street lights for zero dollars and uh, total veterans of $90,823.89. Yay, puppies! Is that a registered voter of the town, by the way? Sorry, couldn't help myself. Anybody have any amendments to uh, what I'm calling page number six? Oh, I hate, I, I can't tell you how many times I did that. It's horrible. I, I, so we'll, I'm sure that those that printed it will fix it next time, right? Advisory committee? Good. Um, how about page number? Select board. Yeah, well, it's a select board. 
Sorry, I shouldn't be criticized. Did you have? Yeah, what's the heading on the page you're working on right now? What's the first line? Uh, well, I just turned the page. So it's uh, total health, sanitation, and special services, 304,000. And the final line is fire truck uh, interest, 224373. Mr. Mallory. Uh, I got a couple of different people. Uh, Mr. Holcraft, did you? You're at the microphone, so there's a couple of people that want to speak, so I'm just... Uh, Linda. I have another one I would like to amend. The library director to $65,000. No, hold on one second. So you want to strike uh, the library director wages of $60,000 and insert $65,000. Yes. Is that correct? Is yes. there a second to the motion? To a man. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Okay. One of the reasons we have a library director that's been here with us for 25 years. In my opinion, I feel she is one of the best library directors we have. She has done all kinds of programs here for the town of Brookfield and especially the children. She has taken a lot of children in the cold weather. They have a place to come. She takes and she buys them snacks and drinks out of her own money and she's very good to every patron that comes in. She knows all of the history here of the town of Brookfield, and she takes time individually to spend with every person that comes in that library and helps them with anything she can. And now she is maintaining two buildings. She's maintaining also the annex of that building. And I fully believe that she is deserving of this money, and she's even deserving of many more, but I will start with $5,000. Any further? I muted myself. Go figure that. Uh, my wife Sue would love it if I do that all more often. I think. Uh, yeah, you need to come to the microphone, and um, you can just lift that right up. It, it'll move right up for you. You got to put your foot. I'd up. like to know how many hours a week that is. <laughs> Leave it to him to just pick the stupid thing up. I was thinking you go. I'm sorry. What? Now I was goofing around. What, what was the question that you asked again? Just say it. How many hours a week? How many hours a week? Can somebody answer that to me? How many hours a week the uh, library director uh, works or what that's based on? Just give me one second. I might have. One second. I'm sure we have an answer somewhere in all these intelligent people up here. Friend is right there. Uh, so, does the, the the librarian, however, so does anybody object to does anybody object to have the librarian uh, address town meeting? I don't believe you're a resident, are you? Does anybody object to that? Okay, good. All right. Um, uh, hold on one second. We gotta we gotta we gotta answer the question before we before we get to anything else. <laughs> I think she was answering the question. Oh, do you have an answer? Oh. Well, why didn't you say so? Well, I'm a little shy, you know. Oh, come on, be bold. <laughs> have fun. This is fun, man. Come on. Okay, okay. Shelby O'Day Hill, and she works, the library director works 36 hours a week. 36 hours a week. There you go. Any further debate? Um, if, if I'm reading this warrant book, it looks like she's getting a 6% raise, and we also are going to vote in possibly a assistant director. Um, the library is only open 21 to 22 hours per week. Based on a seven-day work week, that's only about three hours a day. Um, and if you check with the other towns around, she's getting quite a nice salary right now. And now we want to give her a 6%. And it looks like we're going to vote maybe to give the workers in our town a 3%. So, and also I'd like to know, uh, is Brenda here tonight? Yes. Okay, can she come up and uh, speak on her own behalf? Uh, if she would like to, she well, may. I'm, ask, I'm asking the question. Uh, would you like to come up and speak on your own behalf? It's totally up to you. No, no requirement. You have to come to the microphone, though, because, you know. Mr. Moderator, yeah. Brenda Menderville, Library Director. Yes. What would you like to know? Uh, do you want to speak for yourself at all? I mean, 
the, the, the question is to ask you if you want to defend your wages. I think is what the is that the is what the point is. I guess I you know right. is that is that what you're looking for? Yes. Okay. We we are open 29 hours a week, uh, Tuesday through Saturday. Yep. Kate does all the field trips for the elementary school off hours, so that means during this time of year we're open way more hours, probably closer to 38, sometimes 40 hours. Um, because we deal with all the students that come in for the field trips and getting uh, library cards. Um, I've been here 25 years. Uh, I don't know what else you want to know. Is that, is that, anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions for? We love you, Brenda. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time's almost up, so let's just call it a day. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, I asked to move the question, please. Would you come to the microphone? I, I, I know you I know you want to do I know it's fun to do it that way. I used to do it all the time, but I really need you to come to the microphone. Thomas Carmody, Quaybog Street. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I asked to move the question, please. Uh, there's a motion to move the question, which is to close debate. Is there any objection to closing debate on this question? Okay, it's unanimous. Um, so the motion that we have before us is to amend library director wages from $60,000 to $65,000. All those in favor of giving the library and $65,000 as a salary say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. The ayes have it. Uh, the, the library director wages has been amended to $65,000. Any other questions on this page that we're on right now? Any other amendments that anybody wants to offer? All right, final page. Starts with 18 Common Street and zero dollars and ends with, well, the total. Anybody want to make an offer an amendment to anything on this page? Mr. Moderator, Please, Don Taylor. Sir. Yes. Uh, the line item uh, for the water department expenses um, was requested at 49762 and it's uh, recommended at 43 uh, for 2023. I understand that um, the reason for the reduction is that they've taken the electrical expenses out. Is that is that correct? Can somebody answer that question? Karen, I mean, uh, Kelly. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. So the question is, um, is the reduction in the water. Uh, water department expenses the result of the electricity being taken oh. out of that line? Yes, that's exactly what it is. That's the only thing that was taken. It was bumped into the electricity account. Okay, so there was $6,341.77 was what was removed for the electric. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else on the final page? Because it affects the total. Anything else uh, anywhere on the budget at this point? Because we're. Mr. Moderator. Yeah. Okay. Could you use the microphone? Mr. Moderator, do you need a motion to amend the total? No, I don't. Okay. What I do need, however, is. The motion is still on the floor, so if you look at one of these line items and say, wait a second, I do want to change something, you got a little bit of time. In the meantime, could accountant or town administrator give me a number? Beep, beep. <laughs> I just had a question on the electric with National Grid. Are okay. there, like, do they look into other suppliers and stuff like that for like cheaper rates? Because I know I have electric from National Grid, but I also go through another supplier, which is like half the rate. So I was just looking at, is it just National Grid, or do they look into other things okay. for energy? Can, like can somebody answer that question? Mr. Moderator, through you. The electricity for the town is purchased through a, um, we, we have a contract for a supply. We locked in 15 cents per kilowatt hour prior to it going up to 33 cents because I saw it coming. So <laughs> we, we got it. We got a contract. So you locked in recently? We locked in so, like last summer. Okay. At the 15 cents. Well, just look cent. into the contract. I'm just saying because there's other okay. things, like waivers. Well, we can't. So point uh, because uh, it's a I, I don't want a conversation going on. I just want, to going on. So I just want her yes. to answer the yeah, question. That's a yes. That's a yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. okay. There you Excellent. Go. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. All right. All right. All right, you have a good long time to think about this thing. Uh, so I'm now going to state the motion as it now stands, that the town vote to raise and appropriate the amended amount 
if you want to write this down, get ready, 9,977,377 dollars and 99 cents. Do I have that correct? Good. Okay. Two, defray the expenses of the town uh, for fiscal year 2024 uh, as, as, it's been, as the budget has been amended uh, so far. Uh, okay. So, any further discussion whatsoever? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Uh, the budget has been adopted. Amen. All right, article number three. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to make a motion that the town vote to transfer from free cash $8,000 to pay prior year's unemployment charges to the Department of Unemployment Assistance. A motion has been made that the town transfer from free cash a sum of $8,000 to pay prior year's Unemployment wages to the Department of Unemployment, Unemployment Assistance. Is there a second? second. There is a second. Uh, I just want to let you know, uh, because this is a previous year's budget, it's going to be a four-fifths vote. Four-fifths vote. So 80% of you got to say yes. All right. Uh, is there any discussion uh, on the motion? Uh, yeah. Just as a point of reference, the reason that we have this bill is because when we were in between treasurers during COVID, there were fraudulent claims filed against the town for unemployment. And because there was nobody present at that time who actually challenged those claims, the statute of limitations has run out, which means we have to pay that bill. So if you choose not to pay it, it's just going to get bigger. So. Ah, well, that's an incentive. Is there any further debate? All those in favor of transferring 8,000 bucks from free cash to pay prior year's unemployment wages to the Department of Unemployment Insurance, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. It's unanimous. We got the four-fifths vote. Article number four. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer $40,000 from Water Department Water Surplus Account to the Water Department Water System Capital Expense Account. The motion has been made that the town transfer the sum of $40,000 from the Water Department Water Surplus Account to the Water Department Water Systems Capital Expense Account. Uh, is there a second to the motion? Second. There is a second. Is there any discussion or debate on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of transferring $40,000 from the Water Department Water Surplus Account to the Water Department Water System Capital Expense Account say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion's been adopted. Article number five. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Move that the town vote to transfer um, 400, I'm sorry, four. $48,500 from the ambulance receipt reserve account to fund the fiscal 2024 ambulance expense account. A motion has been made that the town transfer the sum of 48500 bucks to the ambulance receipt reserve account or from uh, the ambulance re receipt reserve account to fund the fiscal 2024 ambulance expense account. Is there a second? Next. Is there any discussion on the motion? The motion is to transfer 48500 bucks from the Ambulance Re Receipt Reserve Account to fund the 2024 Ambulance Expense Account. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion has been adopted. Article number six. Mr. Moderator, I make a motion that the town vote to transfer $260,590 from the Ambulance Receipt Reserve Account to fund the Fiscal 2024 Ambulance Wages Account. A motion has been made that the town transfer $260,590 from the Ambulance Receipt Reserve Account to fund the Fiscal 2024 Ambulance Wages Account. Is there a second? There's a second. Is there any debate on the motion? All those in favor of transferring the sum of $260,590 from the Ambulance Receipt Reserve Account to fund the Fiscal 2024 Ambulance Wages Account, say aye. Aye. And all those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article 7. 
Mr. Moderator, yes. I move that the town vote to transfer from free cash $9,000 to fund the centerline painting of town roads. The motion has been made that the town transfer from free cash 9000 bucks to fund the centerline painting of town roads. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion to transfer from free cash 9000 bucks to paint the center lines in town? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. I think we're on article number eight. It is. It is indeed me. Whose turn? Mr. Moderator, move that the town vote to transfer from free cash $25,000 to fund the roads improvement account. The motion has been made to transfer from free cash 25,000 bucks to uh, fund the road improvements account. Is there a second? Is there any debate on the motion? All those in favor of transferring $25,000 from free cash to fund the road, road improvements account say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number nine. Okay. Yeah, but you may not like this. <laughs> and if you're okay with it. I don't have a motion. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to rate. Raising appropriate. Transfer from free cash. Transfer from free cash the sum of $12,825 to purchase protective clothing for the fire department. Did you say $12,825? Yes. Okay. Um, a motion is made to transfer $12,825 from free cash uh, to purchase protective clothing for the fire department. Is there a second? There is a second. Is there any discussion? The explanation, if I may, within the last few days, we received a notice from our vendor that prices went up 35%. Oh, no, that stinks. Yeah, oh, very much so. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not eggs, it's not milk, it's not gas, it's, yeah. Protective equipment for you guys. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Yeah. You want to say anything more? Never. Okay. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't blame you. Uh, okay, is there any further debate on the, on the question? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of transferring $12,825 from free cash to purchase protective clothing for the fire department say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. You got your $12,825. Chief. Article number 10. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer from free cash to the fleet repair replace account $18,000 to make repairs to tanker one. Motion has been made to transfer $18,000 from fleet repair replace account uh, to make repairs to tanker number one. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of transferring 18,000 bucks from free cash um, to the fleet repair replace account to make repairs to tanker number one say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion passes. Article number 11. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Move that the town vote to set the FY 2024 spending limits as presented in the warrant article number 11 authorized pursuant to chapter 4 financial affairs section 8 of the town's general bylaw. Is it chapter 4 or chapter 5? I'm sorry, chapter 5. Thank you. Okay. Um, so a motion has been made. Uh, that the town set the fiscal year 2024 spending limits as presented in the warrant booklet, article number 11, authorized pursuant to chapter 5, financial affairs, section 8 of the town's general bylaws. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Is there any debate? Uh, all those in favor of accepting those spending limits, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article number 12. Mr. Moderator, yes. Make a motion that the town vote to rescind the borrowing authorizations for the authorized but unissued borrowing in the amount of two hundred and six thousand five hundred and thirty three dollars and five cents, originally approved by votes taken in Articles twenty and twenty one of the six twenty six twenty town meeting as printed in the warrant. 
Boy, is this ever a fun motion. The, the motion is that the town rescind the borrowing authorization for the authorized but unissued borrowing in the amount of $206,533.05, originally approved by votes taken in Articles 20 and 21 at the 626-2020 town meeting. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Uh, any discussion on the motion to rescind the borrowing authorization of things that we didn't borrow? <laughs> I just, this is a great motion. I just can't tell you how much I love this one. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes had it. We rescinded the authorization to borrow $206,533.05. Article number 13. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate $13,100 for longevity pay for the employees. The motion has been made that the town raise and appropriate the sum of money in the amount of $13,100 for longevity pay for the employees. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Is there any debate? Mr. Moderator, I make a motion that we raise, raise and appropriate. Uh, and to amend. To, to, to amend. To $31,150. $31,150. Yeah, $150. Yeah, $31,150. Okay. All right. So uh, we have a motion to amend uh, the motion that was made to raise and appropriate the sum of money of $13,100 for longevity pay for employees, and we want to change $13,100 to $31,150. Is there a second to this motion to amend? Second. Uh, did I hear a second? Second. I heard a second. Oh, there he is. Okay. I, it, was, it was like an echo someplace. Sorry, Rudy. Okay. Debate. Well, Mr. Moderator, it is my understanding that this article is only for full-time employees. It leaves out uh, our emergency services, fire and EMS, of which we have 17 employees with greater than five years experience. Those 17 employees have a total of combined experience with this town of 405 years. Up until this decade, most of the firefighters got no pay for training, no pay for fire calls. That is new. Providing them with a small bonus is a very small incentive for those personnel. Okay. Any other debate on the motion? Matt, I got a question for you before you leave. Did you say you're not getting uh, paid for fire calls? Oh, well, yeah. Um, Fire, Mr. Moderator, firefighters only recently began being paid for structure fire calls. When I first joined the fire department 20 something years ago, we were paid for brush fires only, not structures, not training. Any training we did was on our own. If we wanted to travel for training, we did that on our own. The town did not reimburse us for any of that. What about EMTs? Um, if they go out, let's just say, they go out to a uh, car accident and six of you show up to help out, uh, is that true you get a base pay of three or four hours? Or can you uh, explain that to me? Your EMS personnel, we have two personnel on duty each shift, and they are paid a stipend for that shift, uh, $50. If they do a call, they are paid an hourly rate. If we have a motor vehicle accident, you could, we're gonna get fire response as well. And fire does have minimum pay for firefighters. Uh, no. Hour? Oh. Steve? Is it one hour or three hours? Firefighter, minimum pay. Uh, uh, uh. Half hour is the minimum for firefighters. Okay. Did that answer your question? You still have you still have about 20 seconds or so. I was on the advisory board and uh, I was chairman at the time and we voted this in for you that uh, when you made calls, um, 
if six of you show up at an accident, and one, uh, one of our questions um, was, if six of you show up, do you all get the same pay, uh, a base pay? And I think it was three hours, and, and Beth Coughlin was on the board at that time, too. Um, I just want to know if, I understand that when we voted that in, you were getting uh, the EMT workers get X number of, of hours uh, just to show up. Okay. Um, so not complaining, so, I just want to know what the dollars and right, cents, um, right. if that's true. Okay, you, you, your time's up, so go ahead. Chris Gorman, 32 Pine. Uh, my question to the plant, to the board, is if they increase the price or the uh, warrant, um, does that mean the fire department is included in said um, pay for the longevity? Or does this just add more money without them being included? Mr. Moderator, uh, I'd like to refer this to town council. Uh, Through you, Mr. Moderator, as you all know, my name is Jeffrey Blake. Uh, I'm your town council, and thank you, everybody, for having me. Okay. So th the question was: Is does the amendment make uh, uh, make the fire? I think it said firefighters part of the longevity pay. Okay. The answer to that is the question simply increases the funding. Okay. It does nothing for for the longevity, and I also. Um, was being handed a uh, a policy that, that I guess I'm going to have to read. But to answer your question, no, it does not include the firefighters. It just increases the amount of the line item. I'd like to add that uh, our fire department is invaluable and they should be included and I hope the, the board takes this up and, and adds them and the EMS to uh, the longevity fund. They uh, definitely deserve it. Go ahead. Mr. Moderator, we only get paid for the amount of time we're on the call. It's a minimum of a half hour. Nobody gets three or four hours for showing up. And we we have our two people there, but the rest are firefighters. Uh, and occasionally, if it's something really serious, we have to have extra firefighters, extra EMTs on to help out. Uh, a lot of times they'll show up and say, oh, I'm not needed, and they'll go back. I just didn't want people to think that we were getting paid three or four hours for, for not doing anything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to put a second amendment on the floor indicating that uh, if additional funds are authorized by the town meeting that um, those funds will be directed for the payment of longevity uh, explicitly for the EMS and firefighters. Oh my heavens. Um, Who are not currently included. Um, so I need you to give me that in writing. I, I really, I, that, that, one's, that one's kind of tough. I'm not going to write that down. Um, and so in the meantime, so um, just so to be clear where we are, um, she still has the floor, okay? Um, and so she's going to offer me an amendment. Once she gives it to me in writing, I'll state the amendment. We'll look for a second, and we'll go on from there. But for the moment, we're still debating the question. And the question is to raise and appropriate or uh, to amend uh, the longevity pay for employees from $13,100 to $31,150, okay? That's the question. Yes, and my, <coughs> Tim Rowan, uh, and my question was to Attorney Blake. The, the, the existing article just says, employees. It doesn't differentiate between full or part-time. So I think it does cover the other employees attorney. It says, it's because it simply says pay for employees. Thank you. I, I was looking at a policy that had full and part-time employees in there and it's my understanding that the town's policy did not include the firefighters and EMTs. So if you want if, if, if the increase is for firefighters and EMTs, I strongly suggest that you take uh, uh, the, the select board members' uh, amendment. Um,
Okay. Um, so the amendment that the um, select woman is, is making is going to complicate this a little bit more than I think we really need to. Um, so what I would like to do is take up the motion to amend uh, the 13100 bucks to 31150 And then once we decide that question, we'll take up the, the, the amendment that the select woman, woman would like to offer. Um, so that's how I want to proceed. So again, the question that is before us at this point in time is whether or not we want to amend uh, the amount of money that we're giving for longevity pay for employees from $13,100 to $31,150. Is there any further debate on that question? Hi, Patricia Washburn, Maple Street, Brooklyn. Obviously. Can you swing the microphone down a little bit? I know you got a loud voice, so do I, but you know, believe it or not, back back there it's hard. Stop talk stop picking on a challenge, high challenge person. Yeah. Oh. I can't help my it. Short. Actually, I, I, yeah. Anyhow, um, my question is is what is the overall impact of this article, not just this year, but the overall impact to the town longevity so we're talking about longevity here we're talking about i'm assuming that the longer an employee is an employee of the town they're going to what, get more money or they're going to get compensated more retirement what exactly is this this longevity um, um, supposed to be so could we get an explanation number one what it actually is what the intent is of how people are going to be reimbursed for this longevity and number two what is the impact of the town not just this year but longevity what's the impact going to be over the next 20 years on our on our town budget can somebody answer the question Ms. moderator through you um Mrs. Washburn, because this is a warrant article, this is only for fiscal year 24. This gives no commitment to the town to provide longevity bonuses in any future years. We are only voting on it for fiscal year 24 in this meeting. And uh, with regards to this dispensation, my understanding is that the longevity bonus is not part of their salary, and therefore it is um, not subject to COLA. It is not part of, it does not bump up their, the town's obligation for its contribution to their retirement. And I will uh, defer to the treasurer and the accountant if I am misspeaking in that area. Do, do, excuse me, I'm sorry. Did you have anything further to say? You, you got about 10 seconds. Okay, uh, um, I, I guess the whole thing of it is, is why are we giving it to them in the first place? Are they not getting a raise? Are they not getting their benefits that they're receiving? I mean, why, why, and, and who, how long do they have to work for the town in order for them to be classified longevity employees? Okay, so I'm going to allow the question to be answered. How long does somebody have to work to get, um, to get paid longevity pay? If we got an answer to that, other than that, you're all done. Uh, Mr. Moderator, it's through actually you. in the warrant book. Yeah. In the warrant book, it specifies the longevity tiers, and it starts at five years of accumulated service. Okay, thank you. That's it. So I'm not done. Uh, uh, I'm you, not done. You've had so. two minutes. Okay. You've had two minutes. Uh, guess what? All right. You've had two minutes. Can I take your two minutes, David? Oh, okay. Uh, I'll take my husband's two minutes. How's that, Bill? Somebody's got to ask you a question. If your okay. husband, so I'm sorry, you are all done. If somebody asks you a question okay. in the future, this is the town, the town hall. Ball. This is the town meeting. I'm so going to warn you once. You to ask how much we want to ask and not be subject to a time. I am going to warn you once more. Otherwise, you're going to be removed from the meeting. I'm warning you. And I'm going to make sure I call the state on you. Okay, Marty Banish, Advisory Committee. Marty Banish, Advisory Committee. Um, my question is, why is this considered now here at an annual town meeting when these issues 
take time to resolve and it should be done to we, 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 I'm sorry, we need to speak to the question of the amendment, which is to amend this motion from 13,100 to 31,150. Then I have no comment. Okay. Is there any further debate on amending uh, this motion? Mr. Meyer, I move the question. <laughs> There has been a motion to move the question. Is there a second? Second. Is there any objection to closing debate at this point? Uh, okay, there's an objection. So all those in favor of closing debate say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes had it, two-thirds vote. Debate is closed. The motion before us is a motion to amend uh, the amount of money that we're going to raise and appropriate for longevity pay for employees from $13,100 to $31,150. We will then return to the main motion and, and debate that further. So all those in favor of changing $13,100 to $31,150 say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. 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 Yeah, I said it. Um, the uh, the motion the motion to amend is adopted. So the motion as it stands right now is that the town raise and appropriate the sum of money in the amount of thirty one thousand one hundred and fifty dollars for longevity pay uh, for employees. I would recognize the select woman. She wants to make a motion to amend. You want me to just read it? I will read the motion. Um, if I can read your writing, oh my heavens. No, it's better than mine. Or yours is better than mine. Okay, so move that. The town allocate the funds over and above um, 31150 for longevity pay for employees to be authorized for... Uh, no, I can't read it. Yeah, that would be better. <laughs> Moderator, I move that we amend the current motion uh, that the town allocate the funds over and above 13,000. Okay. Move that the town allocate the funds over and above 13,100 for longevity pay for employees to be authorized for disbursement to the EMT and firefighters. Is there a second to that motion to amend? Second. There's a second. Is there any discussion? So we're only amending this motion to add uh, that the town allocate the funds over and above the one hundred and thirty the thirty one thousand one hundred and fifty dollars for one thirteen thousand. $13,100 for what you other employees. The, everything between $13,100 okay. and right. $31,150 okay. allocated. All right, so let me restate the yeah. motion to amend, which is to add uh, to, this, to this motion uh, that the town allocate the funds over and above the $13,100 for longevity pay for employees to be authorized for um, I can't read that word. Disbursement uh, to EMT and firefighters. And there's been a second to the motion, I believe. Is there a second? Yeah. Yeah, there was. Okay, good. Debate on um, the motion to amend. Chris Gorman, 32 Pine. Uh, my question is to the board. If we do not pass this motion, does that extra money then go back to the original employees that are full-time? No. Yeah. No, because the chart, the, the longevity um, schematic has very specific number of years and specific amounts per employee. So that money would actually just sit in the Warren article. It wouldn't, it would just sit in the bank. It wouldn't go to anyone else. Thank you. Party Vanish Advisory Committee. Um, this motion appears to be a knee jerk reaction to what's been requested here at this meeting. And it seems that the proper method or methodology for handling this situation, a personnel situation, is to have it reviewed by the personnel board and approved by the board of selectmen. So I am not in favor of this proposal. Okay. Any further debate on uh, the motion to amend uh, the longevity pay Excuse motion? Me, uh, Mr. Moderator, yeah. I just have one factual uh, point, if, if the gentleman who made that motion, if they could um, 
how, where did the number come from? I mean, I know you have, you said there's a number of employees. Uh, 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 one moment, one moment. If you're talking about the 31,150, that, 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 that's already been decided. We're not going to talk about that any further. How do we know it's the right number? Uh, the town meeting voted the amendment. I mean, is there a wrong figure here? Uh, is there some predisposed figure that... Okay, good, there isn't, okay. Is, is it good? Okay, we're good. Okay, so uh, we have a motion to amend uh, the longevity pay uh, article here uh, to add that the town allocate the funds over and above 13,100 bucks for longevity pay for employees to be authorized for disbursement to EMT and firefighters. Is there any further debate on the motion to amend? Okay. Um, I'm Linda Lincoln and I'm the chairman of the personnel board and uh, my opinion is that we should pass over this this article and I think it should be discussed by the personnel board where everyone fits in including the fire department and the EMS. Okay, so so no, wait, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to recognize anybody because I just want to explain what's gone down. Um, so uh, Linda, um, there's no motion to pass over. When we get to the main, mo back to the main motion, because we're still on a motion to amend, uh, I believe, um, then you can talk about maybe making the motion to, um, uh, a motion to uh, postpone indefinitely, okay, which would kill it and then they'd take it up at it some other time, okay? So uh, at the moment, I want to talk about the motion to amend this longevity pay uh, motion, which is uh, to uh, um, that the town allocate the funds over and above 13,100 bucks for longevity pay for employees to be authorized for disbursement to EMT and firefighters. Is there any further debate on this particular motion to amend? I'm sorry. Do you mean to include the EMT and firefighters? The motion as it's been presented to me is uh, that we add the language that says the town allocate the funds over and above $13,100 for longevity pay for employees to be authorized for disbursement to EMT and firefighters. That's what I was given as a motion that's been seconded and we've been debating it. Um, is there any, so I have someone at the microphone. If you, if you have a problem with this, then why don't you come on up and, and we can deal with that. Go ahead. Uh, all I gotta say is uh, five years for longevity is a little ridiculous. 10, 10 to 15 years would be more like it. Thank you. I'm questioning the way that the, the amendment is written. It, the way that the amendment sounds, the way that you read it, does not say that they include the EMT and firefighters, which meaning that it's only for the EMT and firefighters. It's not saying all of the employees, including EMT and firefighters. If you read it again, I think the language is skewed. Actually, um, would you please address that question because it, I actually understand uh, what she's saying. And so, because it's basically saying anything above 13,100 bucks um, be allocated toward EMT and firefighters. And that's it. Correct. And that's it. So that means that the first 13,100 is... Speaking of the microphone. All right. So the, the intent of the phrasing is that up to 13,100 was calculated and is, and, is, and is under the purview of the policy book. The policy book indicates that it's full-time employees. The, the math that was included in the original number on the warrant article is sufficient funds to pay the longevity bonuses for the employees that qualify under the verbiage of the policy book. The intent of the amendment is to clarify Per, and, and it's in line with Mr. Gorman's question, that just because the town meeting allocated the additional funds to $31,150, 
to allow for the payment of the longevity bonus to EMTs and firefighters. There's no explicit verbiage in the policy that would allow the disbursement to those employees based on their work classifi classification and category. By voting that amendment, the intent of the amendment is to allow disbursement to personnel not currently qualified under the personnel bylaw to receive the funds that the town meeting has indicated that they want directed to those personnel. So the, the verbiage does say that fundamentally. So 13-1, as indicated in the original motion, is for the employees that are qualified under the personnel handbook. The over and above is, is indicated to be directed to the EMTs and firefighters as currently approved from a total fund perspective by this town meeting. That makes sense to me. Yeah, so in, in other words, you're right. You're correct. The rest of it is going to be allocated to EMT and firefighters. So, do you have anything else? That seems like a lot of money. It's a lot of people. And they okay, okay. We got somebody at the microphone. Okay, so, so I mean, that just seems like you're talking about $13,100 just for the EMT and firefighters? No, it's $13,100 for the, for the so regular we're town about employees. $20,000 oh. just for the EMS and firefighters. You've already voted it at the town, at the town okay. meeting has already voted to allocate. Okay. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll speak to that, okay. select woman. Okay. okay, but my question is of the entire, our, 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 the, the adding the EMT and firefighters on, we're talking about allocating $20,000 just to the EMS and firefighters. 25 dollars to be exact. Okay, so that seems to me like an awful lot of money for just that depart those two departments versus all the other employees in town. Yeah. Okay, your time is up. Thank you. But they're Next. only part-time. On call. I, I just have a question. My name is Dennis Tucker. I live at 2 Kimball Street. Um, the difference between the 13,100 and the 31,150, is that based on the number of EMTs and firefighters and their years of service? Has that been calculated? Is that the correct amount? That's the correct amount, yes. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Meyer, my name is Christopher Keller, 36 Lake Road. And I just want to say that uh, the longevity is uh, Donna for 46 years, Herb for 46 years, Steve for 42 years, Bill for 38 years, Dave for 33 years, Matt for 31 years, Terry for 29 years, Phil for 25 years, Charlie for 21 years, Linda for 21 years, Jeff for 18 years, Matt for 15 years, Dan for 12, Ashley for 10, Herb um, for 6. I mean, that there, it's there. I mean, the longevity is there. I mean, this, I think this is overdue. And I think we should support it. Okay. Is there any further debate? Um, the motion uh, to, you get, yeah, careful. The motion to amend uh, the longevity pay to add the wording that the town allocate the funds over and above 13,100 bucks for longevity pay for employees to be authorized to be authorized for disbursement to EMT and firefighters. Is there any further debate on the motion to amend? Okay, all those in favor of amending this accordingly say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes had it. Uh, the motion has now been amended. So the motion reads that the town raise and appropriate the sum of money in the amount of $31,150 for longevity pay for the employees and that the town allocate funds over and above $13,100 for longevity pay for employees to be authorized for disbursement to EMT and firefighters. That is the main motion as it stands right now. Is there any further debate on the main motion? All those in favor of adopting this motion say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. The ayes have it. Uh, the motion has been adopted as amended. All right. Article number 14. Mr. Moderator, move that the town vote to appropriate $70,000 from cable peg receipt reserve fund for the purpose of funding cable related costs, expenses, fees, payroll, and general oversight of public access cable for fiscal year 2024. One moment.
All right. The motion has been made that the town appropriate $70,000 from the cable tag receipt reserve fund for the purpose of funding cable related costs, expenses, fees, payroll, and general oversight of public access cable for fiscal year 2024. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Any debate? All those in favor? of appropriating $70,000 from the Cable Peg uh, Receipt Reserve Fund for the purposes of funding uh, basically cable access. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I make a motion to pass over this article. Are we you? Uh, hold on, hold on, one, hold on, hold on one second, hold on. So what you really want to do, this isn't really a pass, you want to postpone indefinitely is what you really want to do? Sure. I, just I want, want to postpone you know. indefinitely. Okay, that, that will kill it, okay? I just want yeah, you to know it'll, it'll be gone, okay? I just want to tell you that, okay? okay. So, a motion has been made uh, to postpone indefinitely. Uh, did I call for a second on this? I did, right? No. I didn't? Oh, is there a second? Okay, there's a second. Sorry about that. Okay, there's a motion uh, to postpone indefinitely, uh, and postponing indefinitely will kill this if you vote yes for it okay it'll be all over and we'll go to the next article just want to make sure that everybody's clear on what this motion does is there a second to postpone this motion indefinitely he just seconded it is there a second yeah. there's a second thank you um all right go ahead debate okay um cable access hasn't been on the cable tv in years so why would we spend seventy thousand dollars for something we're not getting I mean, you can go on YouTube, but even on YouTube, we're not seeing the selectmen's meeting. You're not seeing any of the other meetings. So we're going to spend $70,000 for payroll for things that we just don't have. So why are we going to expend that money? I understand that there's money sitting in a reserve account, but that doesn't mean that we need to uh, allocate it for anything that we're not getting the services for. Okay. You, you saw it. Bottom. Of Man. Okay. So. Well, I mean, and, unless somebody can explain to me why it's not on cable access, why you don't see anything, that would be a great idea, but they want the money for the payroll, then at least they should do the job. And Mr. we're not Moderator. getting that done. Mr. Moderator, through you? Um, no. Okay. You, know what, you can keep speaking. Unless you want somebody to answer a question for you. Well, let, let me, uh, Mr. Moderator, to Mr. Holcraft. When's the last time that it was on cable access was on the TV? Five years. And how is our equipment that we have from the cable access? Uh, would you please come to the microphone so everybody can hear you? She's asking questions and people need to hear. Uh, five years ago was when we stopped. Um, it hasn't been on for five years. YouTube is not really on. Uh, the equipment was in fairly good shape when we stopped five years ago, and I do not know the condition of the equipment right now. Um, but we definitely need to get this back on so the townspeople know what's really going on in this town. Okay, uh, you got about 10 seconds. I have another question. Uh, you really don't have time for another question. Um, Your time is up. I'm sorry. You're done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So there's a motion on the floor to postpone uh, this motion indefinitely, which is going to kill it. Okay. Is there any further debate on the motion to postpone indefinitely? All those in favor of... So if you vote yes, it's going to kill the motion and we're all done. We'll go to the next article. If you vote no, we're going to continue debating this, this motion. Okay? All right. All those in favor of postponing indefinitely, please say yes. 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 Yeah. All those opposed, say no. No. The no's have it. We're now back to the main motion, which is uh, to appropriate $70,000 from the Cable Peg Receipt Reserve Fund for the purposes of funding cable access. Is there any further debate on the motion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of um, appropriating $70,000 from the Cable Peg Receipt Reserve Fund say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article 15. Mr. Moderator, I make a motion that the town vote to raise and appropriate $568.50 to fund the plantings and care of plants on the Triangle Memorial Beds and Gazebo. 
The motion has been made to raise and appropriate 568 bucks and 50 cents to fund plantings and care of plantings on the Triangle uh, Memorial Beds and Gazebo. Is there a second? There's a second. Any discussion on the motion? All right, all those in favor of, of um, raising an appropriate $568.50 $568 uh, to plant uh, flowers around the Triangle Memorial Beds and Gazebo, say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Uh, the ayes had it. Uh, the motion is adopted. Article number 16. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer from free cash $12,000 for a lawn mower for the cemetery department to replace the 2005 Bobcat mower. Motion has been made that the town transfer from free cash $12,000 for a lawn mower for the cemetery department to replace the 2005 Bobcat mower. Is there a second? There is a second. Is there any discussion on the motion uh, to spend 12,000 bucks on a mower for the cemetery? All those in favor of transferring from free cash $12,000 for a lawn mower for the cemetery department to replace the 2005 Bobcat mower say aye. Yeah, aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article 17. Mr. Moderator. Yep. Move that the town vote to transfer from free cash $60,000 for the Brookfield Cemetery Department to pave two roads plus incidental costs. Motion has been made to transfer $60,000 from free cash for the Brookfield Cemetery Department to pave two roads plus incidental costs. Is there a second? There is a second. Uh, is there any discussion or debate on the motion? I'm Peter Masuso, 15 River Street. Along with my former colleague uh, on the commission, Wayne Yaskoski, we served for 15 years as cemetery commissioners beginning in 2000. We appreciate the volunteer work that the current commission does, as well as the efforts of Mike, the superintendent, cemetery caretakers Herb and Jim Milner, as well as Ryan and Donald with the highway department. The cemetery always looks nice. It's truly a standout in the town. Working closely with Ron Kucher, and other members of the Brookfield Historical Commission, the Massachusetts Historical Commission, as well as historic landscape architecture and preservation preserv preservatists, a, a preservation management plan for the Brookfield Cemetery was developed in 2000 and approved by the Massachusetts Historic Commission. The purpose of this large project was to complete all necessary documentation for submittal of a nomination to the National Register of Historic Places and to develop a long-term plan for preserving, maintaining, and protecting the cemetery landscape, which I hold in my hands as an archival copy. And these were given to the commissioners at the time, as well as to the superintendent. And uh, this one comes from the Historic Commission. But it exists today. Brookfield Cemetery was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 2003. It dates back to the very early 1700s. It's still in use today in the exact same location. It most likely is the only cemetery in the country that can make this claim. In speaking with the cemetery superintendent this morning regarding the paving material that is planning to be used in this article, you got 20 seconds. he told me that it was asphalt. The intent here is good, but it specifically says asphalt should be removed and prohibited from future use, unquote. Rather, it should be a chip seal type of bituminous asphalt with a road gravel aggregate used. Your time is up. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, so Mike, Cem uh, Mike Sears, cemetery superintendent, and I just do want to follow up on some of the remarks that Peter did make. Um, it is true that we have a preservation plan and there is a recommendation that uh, the material that Peter suggested be used. However, I do want to make it clear that it doesn't affect any future grants that we have or may be eligible for if we did use the asphalt. And right now, currently, um, there's two roads that are in serious disrepair. I mean, if you've driven down there, take a sedan, and uh, on one of those roads, it's really raised up, and uh, it's problematic, and it does need to be addressed. Um, but again, I want to state that um, in speaking to the person that originally did the cemetery uh, assessment, 
uh, from Mass Historical. I spoke with him today, and uh, what, he, what he told me is that um, when you have pre-existing material, like the asphalt that is there today, it will not um, jeopardize any future grants because it is pre-existing. And um, there's four roads in the new part of the cemetery that are asphalt, and some of that's broken up pretty serious. Um, and I, I, I personally feel like we have to address this. I think the, the, the probably the best solution, and I don't think it takes away from the cemetery, is to use the, the asphalt. And it's, it's not taken away because it is pre-existing asphalt there. So I would uh, hope that we could move forward with this proposal. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Donald Fagnall. Question is to the uh, library commissioners. Why didn't you consider using chip seal on this project? Is it? Cemetery, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, what, one of the issues with the chip seal, and yes, again, it's a recommendation, but it, it can be problematic. Um, when it is used, and then you plow on that, it really creates a mess. And so, you know, we're already dealing with that when we do plowing at the cemetery right now. When we have the broken asphalt, we have a serious cleanup of that asphalt that gets scattered amongst the, uh, the graves and so forth, creates a mess. The concern is anybody that's used that kind of material is it does break up during the winter when there's plowing and it, it, it creates a mess. The asphalt solution is more permanent and it's, it's more stable for plowing. And so that's the, the general reason. Thanks. You got about a minute. So the $60,000 is going to put a base into whatever roads you do so we won't be back to have the same problem? Is that correct? Yes. That's correct. You want them to talk more? All right. And, and $60,000 $60, is going to get it's which sections of roads? Um, section C and I believe B, um, they're the ones in most disrepair. I think it's Section C. If you've been down there, you'll see that this, in the middle of the road, it's raised up significantly. It's, it's, it's creating a bit of a problem. So this money would cover two roads right now. And of course, we would never, ever use asphalt in, in the, what's been designated as the historical part of the cemetery. Those are pre-existing dirt roads. We try to keep up on those on an annual basis. You'll notice there's some potholes here and there. We fill them in. But again, it comes back to the material that's used now and that's on there is asphalt. So it makes sense from our standpoint to go forward with that, that kind of pavement. It's a lot more smooth, a lot more stable. Uh, uh, oh. Carver Eaton, 13 West Main. Uh, I was on the historical commission uh, when we put the uh, plan together. That <laughs> good and loud and. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Am I talking? All right. Okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> uh, this, high, this high technology gets me, you know. Uh, I was on the commission when we put the preventive the plan, the preservation plan together, which was the basis for getting the historical designation. Uh, the cemetery commission at that time supported it. The historical commission supported it. Uh, uh, I disagree with Mike the saying it's a real problem. Uh, I've been down there, I've walked it, I've driven on it. Uh, it's not pretty, but asphalt is something that they said that we should not be doing. In fact, they recommended we take the asphalt out of there. Uh, I would urge that we look at the alternatives. Do nothing, scrape off the quote hump that Mike says is a problem and I have I have a low car and I drive through there with my car and there's no problem. Uh, chip seal as they recommend or the asphalt that Mike represents. But I think it requires further study 
and support from the Historical Commission as well, and talking to somebody who really knows about this. But 60,000 doesn't seem like uh, it's going to do much of a job. Uh, I would encourage that we either pass over this article or we uh, consider looking at it more thoroughly than we have with this article. Is there a committee or commission that would that should be studying this? Uh, I would recommend that the historic commission be involved. They were involved in the original. It, it is a historic site. So and, the reason, and, and, so, so hold on. Okay. The reason why I'm asking is you could send it to some committee and have them study it and come back with a report if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I'm not sure it needs to even be a committee, just a group of people who are qualified. Uh, you need to specify who it goes to. I would, oh, I inspect, you want me to? Yes, I would say uh, members of the Historic Commission, a couple of members of the Historic Commission, a couple of members from the, the uh, uh, once somebody from the Highway Department perhaps, uh, somebody from the Cemetery Commission, and maybe a couple of at-large people. I'm not sure you need a committee. Uh, it needs to be a committee of some sort. Okay. Otherwise, we're not, right. not going to accept the motion. Yeah. All right. But so, I, think, I think it really needs for their study. Hold on one second. Okay. Sure. So, you have said that you would like to commit this to a commission made up of two members uh, from the Historical Commission. I think you said two members from the Highway Department. Uh, a, a member from the One Highway. member from yeah. the Highway Department. Yeah. One member from the cemetery committee. Two, two members. Two members from yeah, the absolutely. cemetery committee. Yeah. And what else? A couple of at-large members. Um, two at-large members. Yeah. To be appointed by whom? The select board. I don't know. Is it, That's I, 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 I will take advice from somebody. Okay. So um, there's a motion that's been made. Uh, to commit this to a committee made up of two members from the Historical Commission to be decided by the Historical Commission, one member from the Highway Department, presumably to be appointed by the superintendent, uh, two members from the Cemetery Committee, and two members at large that would be appointed by the Select Board. Is that what you want to do? Yes. Is there a second to that motion? Second. second. There is a second. Is there any debate on the motion to commit this? If this gets committed, it'll go to the it'll go to this committee that we're forming, and they'll come back with a report when? When do you want them to report back? To the select board? I would say three months. Three months. We'll report back to the select board in three months. Okay. All right. Is there any discussion on the motion? Do you want to discuss it at all? Or somebody else is back there wants to speak to it, so you want to give it a Okay. I want to support the motion um, from an environmental perspective. I know that our I, I believe that our concom is still empty, so we can't ask for members of the Conservation well, Commission no, on this one. Oh, they're here. Uh, okay, then is it possible for me to amend the amendment to ask for a member of the Conservation Commission to be on there? Because asphalt is really bad for our environment. Any place you that can we do can that. use. Is that what you would like to do? Is that what you would like to do? Yes, thank you. All right. There's a, there's a motion to amend forming this committee. Does this add someone from the Conservation Commission? Is there any objection to just add, adding that person to this committee that we're attempting to reform? Okay, so we're back to the main motion, which now, uh, let's see, con, con which now is going to form a committee to study this question. Uh, two members from the Historical Commission, one member from the Highway Department, two members from the Cemetery Committee, uh, two members at large to be appointed by the Select Board, uh, and one member from the Conservation Commission to report back uh, to the select board uh, in three months. Is there any further debate? Yes, uh, Pat O'Day, 27 Weber Road. Yeah. I am a cemetery commissioner. Okay. And I'd like to know if this money is going to go away if we vote this away. In other words, can we save this money to do something with the project uh, in free cash and we're going to have to wait till next year. Now these roads are bad. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, they're bad. I'm worried about the elderly falling, and we're not touching the historic part of the of the grave sites. 
We just want two roads so that people can manage those roads easily and get in and out. That's all we're asking. So I'm asking, can we still have that 60000 in free cash after this committee looks at the whole thing? Depends on the report of the committee, but I would think yes. Well, so, thinking so, and appropriating it is a different story, right? So, Who can answer the question? I can have to make a motion. What? So, um, as it stands right now, okay, if this motion, I'm sorry, if this motion is adopted, it's going to form a committee uh, of these people, mm -hmm. and they're going to report back in three months. That's it. But I would like to see that 60000 reserved somehow so that we can do the work. Okay, so what I think you're saying is you oppose this. No. What, oppose what? I oppose not paving. I want to see that paved. No, so the motion that's on the floor is to form a committee. I'm okay with that. Okay. But I'd like to reserve the money so that we'll have it to work okay. with when there's okay, a... Hold on. Hi, Laurie Barkis, Town Accountant. Through you, Mr. Moderator. The 60000 if you so vote it and it approves, it will be reserved in an article, article account which will be called Paving Two Roads in the Cemetery. If the committee comes back and has a disapproving opinion and does not choose to go ahead with the paving, at the end of the fiscal year, the committee can and the Board of Selectmen can choose to either let the 60000 go back into the town's free cash or at the next town meeting, we can vote to reallocate the $60,000 to another warrant article for the cemetery or for something else. So to the moderator, I understand what the lady's saying, but if okay. they decide to do CHIP instead, we're, we don't have any money unless, unless we approve the money now is what I'm saying. The article just says paving. It well, we're amending, say, we're amending the article. Right, but it just, it doesn't say asphalt specifically. It just says paving of two roads. So, so Mr. Moderator, no, says, for you. it says as, asphalt. Well, Mr. Moderator. It says paved two roads. Yeah, go ahead. Can I propose an amendment? <laughs> so, I'm a little fearful we're getting a little bit too complicated. I, I'd like it to be simple. I just want to make sure there's going to be okay. money there for us to be okay. able to do this project. One word. What's your word change? My word change is okay to the surface. Well, I can't hear her. Okay. I read that at town council. No, no. Okay. Yes, he wants to speak. <laughs> this is right now okay the motion to commit this to this committee will not save this sixty thousand dollars for anything that's there'll be a report back that's so if you want to spend the sixty thousand dollars now then I would oppose this this motion to commit this if well I don't want to spend it now but I'd like to save it so we could spend it later when they approve okay I let's just make a decision on the on the committee you Let's make a, a decision on whether or not to commit this to a committee, okay? And you've had more than two minutes, so I've got to I got to move this along a little bit. I get it, okay? Are I going to say my name each time? No. Okay. Um, as for the Conservation Commission, I am chair of that that group, that board, and I have a question: Is this project anywhere near a wetland or in the buffer zone of a wetland? So then, my follow-up question is that: be, Does Concon have any? Responsibility or even even any say legally on that issue. Whatever the whatever they whatever the report that's issued out of this committee. Okay, that would all right. be all. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Moderator, can we modify the amendment that Kermit um, that Kermit proposed by including? Um, the wording stating that if the project is approved, 
by the committee that the money can be put in a re or can the money be put into a reserve now, waiting for approval of the committee, and that way the money would be there for the paving, but it would only get allocated if the committee approved. the answer to your question. Thank you. Sorry. No, that's okay. I'm asking the question. Yep. All right. I don't know if this is uh, in order, but I'd like to make a couple of comments that I forgot about. One, one, two, one. As long as they're relevant to committing it to this committee. No, they're not. Okay. Then, no. Okay. All right. So, we're kind of at a point where, is there any further debate on committing this to a committee made up of um, two members of the Historical Commission, one member of the Highway Department, two from the Cemetery Committee, or, uh, yeah, Committee, Commission, uh, two at-large appointed by the Selectmen, and, and one from the CONCOM? Any further debate on the motion to commit? Is it, amend is it allowed to make an amendment to this? Uh, depends on what it is. What do you want to do? And that $60,000 be set aside for payment for pavement and or improvements to two roads in the cemetery. Okay. $60,000 be appropriated from free cash. From free cash, correct. Read that to me again. I've got to put my glasses on. <laughs> well, hurry up, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> And that $60,000 be transferred from free cash and set aside for the pavement and or improvement of the roads in question in the cemetery. All right. For the improvement of cemetery roads. No, no, All right. Anybody object to this? All right. So the, the uh, oh, I guess, is there a second? Does anybody object to this thing? No. Okay. Um, all right, so your motion to amend has been adopted. So the motion now reads uh, to commit uh, this article uh, to a commission made up of two members of the Historical Commission, one member of the Highway Department, two members of the Cemetery Commission, two at-large members to be appointed by the Select Board, uh, one member from the Conservation Commission to report to the Selectmen uh, three months hence, and that $60,000 be transferred from free cash for the improvement of cemetery roads. Okay, that's, that's the motion. Is there any okay. further debate on the motion to commit this thing? Oh, good. Uh, okay, all those in favor of sending this uh, to the to this commission to let them decide how to spend the 60,000 bucks to repair uh, uh, cemetery roads, say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. The ayes have it. The motion to commit has been adopted. Uh, we look for a favorable report uh, three months hence. Article 18. Mr. Moderator, I make a motion that the town vote to transfer from free cash $20,000 to bring the water service at the cemetery into compliance along with any incidental costs. <laughs> Could you read that again for me, please? 
I make a motion that the town vote to transfer from free cash $20,000 to bring the water service at the cemetery into compliance along with any incidental costs. My apologies. Thank you very much. A motion has been made that the town transfer from free cash $20,000 to bring water service at the cemetery into compliance along with any incidental costs. Is there a second? Okay. Is there any debate on the motion? Not a debate, but just some questions here. Okay. Um, what is the $20,000 for? We have a water department and we have a highway department. Um, why can't we use both of them to uh, get this, this task accomplished? Do you, Mr. Moderator, the water department and the highway department are doing this project? That's for materials. $20,000 for materials? How much piping are we doing down there? 1,700 feet, Mike says. Okay, thanks. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Uh, the article in the book reads to raise and appropriate, not transfer from free cash. So I question the reading of the article. No, it says raise and appropriate, transfer or borrow. Yes. Transfer. Yeah. So transfer or borrow. Transfer. This is a transfer from free cash. So it, it, it's legitimate. I'm accepting it. Why are we transferring it from free cash and not raising and appropriating? Because if we raise and appropriate it, it goes on the tax bill and the free cash is money sitting in the bank so we don't have to raise taxes to do the project. Anything else? Okay. All right. Any further debate on uh, the motion to transfer from free cash $20,000 to bring the water service at the cemetery into compliance along with any incidental costs? Is there any further debate? All those in favor? Say aye. Aye. Oh, oh, say no. The motion has been adopted. Uh, Article 18. 19. 19. 19, sorry. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer from free cash $2,500 to purchase gravel for to be used only on various repairs for private roads that meet the town bylaw requirements. A, mo a motion has been made that the town transfer from free cash the sum of $2,500. Um, the way that I have it written here, it says to purchase the gravel for the purpose of making various repairs for private roads that meet the town bylaw. Is that, is that close enough to the, to the motion? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any debate? Okay, we get private roads, and in the past, the people that want to improve their private roads, they have to get their own material, and then the highway will spread it. Now, what's changing now? In what private roads are going to get the 2,500? Um, and is this going to go on every year? I mean, what, what's the change now? we get got to change here. And I, and I know people on private roads pay taxes as well as the rest of us, but the way this town is, has worked in, in the past is if they want, they want uh, material, they got to pay for it. So some, can someone explain that? Based on what the bylaw says, the town can do this subject to appropriation. If we don't appropriate the funding for the temporary repairs, and they have to meet all of the specifications that are in the bylaw before the roads can do it, it's first come, first serve. Once the gravel's gone, the gravel's gone. But this allows the people on the private roads and the town to have a resource to do those repairs if they meet the bylaw requirement to qualify for it. So we need to appropriate or they still can't do it. That's what the bylaw says. And that's the only reason it's in there. So, so the, excuse me, so the people on private roads, who are they going to see to um, get there first to get the, get the gravel? I mean, uh, we're going to have a mad rush and then someone's going to say, oh, I like those people on the road, but I don't like those, so they're not going to get any gravel. And that could happen. Yeah. Wait, hold, hold on a second. Was that a, was that a question or is that just a comment and that's it? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a question. So how are you going to distribute the, how is the, how is the, how are you going to distribute the gravel? No, I, I got to get an answer from this. Or, uh, does anybody have an answer for this? I'm, I'm looking at the bylaw. 
Why don't you go ahead? Okay. We can see. Oh, oh, I, oh wait a minute. No, I found you got an answer. Sorry. So the bylaw reads that the town of Brookfield may, subject to appropriation, make temporary repairs on private ways, provided that the private way has been open to public for public use for a period of six years or more, that there shall be at least three dwellings located along the way. Such repairs shall consist of the filling of holes or depressions in the surface of the pavement construction of, um, wait a minute, my eyeballs jumped, sorry. Depressions in the surface of such ways, sand, gravel, cinders, and suitable materials, and shall not include resurfacing or permanent construction of any ways or grading. Not more than twice a year, and shall not include construction. No repair shall be done unless all abutters sign an agreement that the town be held harmless from all damages and claims resulting from such repairs. The select board have declared such repairs to be required of public necessity, and the select board shall schedule the repairs based upon the annual appropriation thereof. So they have to fall into that category. Once all of those are met, whoever gets to the town first with all of those requirements would be the road that would get priority. Sounds to me like the selectmen are going to make that decision, depending on the applications. That's the way that it sounds to me. And your time's up. So go ahead, ma'am. Hi. I live on the corner of Craybog and Chestnut. And Chestnut's supposedly a private road, but people go down to hunt. There are several the streets off of it. There's um, four street off of it. It is so bad that we literally go like this trying to get to our houses and it's ruined cars and we've been begging someone. The town has come <coughs> as long as we paid for the materials but with, with the rise in cost of everything, we can't afford an extra $200 and it only lasts three months and then it just stops over. And I just want to know, do we fall under that bylaw and how would we <laughs> go about peeing? We need it desperately worse than any road I've ever seen. So I think um, at this point you probably need to talk to the select board once this once this motion is adopted. Go to the select board and talk to them about how you can do that. Um, I don't think this is a thing for town meeting to be taking up at this point in time. I think it's better for you to talk to the select board uh, once this money is adopt once this money is appropriated. Okay. So, but it seems we fall under the bylaw, right? I, I would. I would. You'd have to. You'd have to go to the select board and and, and talk to them on how to go ahead and do okay. that. Thank okay. Thank you so much. You're very no welcome. There you go. Chris Gorman, 32 Pine. Um, which roads are this for? The ones that meet the bylaw that I just read. So I don't know the names of the roads that qualify. They have to have been open for five years. It has to be declared a public necessity. They have to. Have, there's, there's a whole list of. So there's a whole list of requirements yeah. that, that need to be satisfied in order for it to get it. So I don't think they. I don't think they have a list of. Well, I don't know. Maybe they do have a list of roads, but um, you know. Okay. Uh, how did this uh, bylaw come about, or how did this warrant come up, come about? People complain constantly that they can't get their roads fixed, and I'm trying to help. Do we have a list so of the roads? So that's the warrant that article's purpose. Do we, do we have a list? list? Yeah. No, we do not have a list. They have to meet the bylaw requirements. Once they jump through all of that, yep. that's when we'll start looking at the roads. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Moderator, there actually is a list. I believe there's nine roads that qualify. I don't. I can't tell you what they are. Cool. But I believe that highway can help. Thank you. Any further debate on um, transferring from free cash, twenty-five hundred bucks, to purchase gravel for the purpose of making various repairs to private roads that meet town bylaw requirements? All right. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. Yeah, I say it. The motion is adopted. Uh, Article twenty. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Move, move that the town vote to transfer from free cash $250,000 to pay off the debt associated with 18 Common Street. Motion has been made that the town transfer from free cash a sum of up to $250,000 uh, to pay off debt associated with 18 Common Street. Is there a second? second. There's a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? <laughs> to the um, town accountant. Um, what is the interest rate that we're paying on the debt now? 
Okay. Well, do we can we take a stab at what the interest rate would be? I have no idea. I, I don't. I, the accountant doesn't do anything with the debt. Okay. So, does anybody know what the debt, what the interest rate of the debt is? Treasurer. Okay, and the treasurer isn't here. No, no she was. No, she was. No, she was. That's great. <clears throat> okay, the reason that I'm asking that, Mr. Moderator, is the simple fact is that we have a $250,000 debt probably at an extremely low interest rate that we're paying off right now. If we tie, if we take the money out of free cash, we can't use that free cash somewhere else that we may need down the road where we might have to get a debt at a higher interest rate. So we should leave the debt the way that it is but the, the free cash... No, no, no. Hold, hold, hold on. You're interrupting. I'm, I'm sorry. She, she, no, keep going. Okay. So the, the point is, is that we should leave the free cash sitting there and for reasons of keeping the free cash and let the debt ride if the interest rate is at such a low rate at this point because natural interest rates are above 6%. This could be at 3%. We're actually making money by not paying the debt off. Yeah, uh, are you all done? You still yeah, have yeah, No, they can, they can answer and then. Okay, so you want to answer? With this type of debt, we don't have permanent borrowing, so we don't have that nice, pretty interest rate. <coughs> Excuse me, we have to roll this every single year, which means we're subject to the new interest rate and closing costs every single year. So paying this off, we're not subject to that volatile interest rate market, and we don't have to pay the closing costs. Okay, and you know this why? Because you're not the treasurer. So tell me why, how do you know this? How do you know this? I mean, I'm asking about the interest rate, and you told all you sat there and said, we don't know what the interest rate is. Hold, hold, hold on one second. Hold on one second. I believe she attempted to answer the question, and if I understood the answer correctly, um, she's basically saying that this has to be done every single year. So every single year, we have to borrow a new set of money. I believe that's what she's saying. And when we're doing that, we've got to pay closing costs and perhaps a higher interest rate than what we're paying now. We I believe that, hold on one second. I believe that was the answer to the question, okay? So keep going, you got, you got time. Okay, well, I, what I'm asking is, is she, couldn't, she couldn't tell us what the interest rate is, but she has that information that she didn't come okay, forward with when I asked the original question. That, that's the, well, I mean, you asked for interest rate. Okay, so your time is up. Yeah. That's fine. So the town does one-year borrowings on this small of a loan. I don't know what the interest rate is, but I do know that we borrow the money every single year. In terms of using the free cash to pay it off, our free cash expires on June 30th. So if we don't use it for one-time purchases, it essentially disappears. We have to wait to close the books again, and we get recertified for free cash. So it becomes unavailable, so it's to be used for purposes like this. We also have other debt out there, so we're trying to reduce the amount of debt we have on our books. And how much debt do we have? Um, we have this, and we also have the fire truck that we purchased, which I believe we borrowed 490000 and we have the remaining borrowing left on the police station, which we had to take out a long-term borrowing on because we maxed out the amount of one-year borrowings we were allowed to do. You're only allowed to do it for 10 years at a time. Okay, so your time has expired. If no one else wants to debate, you got another two minutes, okay? So I, I just, you know, want you to know. Do I have two minutes in the kitty? You do have two minutes in the kitty. Holy crap. Okay. okay, now I want to go through the uh, town administrator, through the advisory board. Uh, let me make sure my figures are right. Now, this year you're allocating $2,200 <clears throat> to pay for the 18 Common Street, correct? Two hundred and fifty thousand. Right, but you know, what? What are we paying out of the budget every year to, to hold this house? It's twenty-two hundred. Is that correct? I, That's what it shows. Only, we <coughs> only bought it last year. Right. So I can't answer that question because it would change well, everything. Well, I, I thought I read that we allocated twenty-two hundred. Uh, what is, what is the figure? That's what I'm asking. Does anybody know what we're allocating? It, 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 right there in the budget sheet, the the FY. 23 budget was um, $6,500 for the principal. And then the interest was 
2260 that you're talking about. So the total right, bill, okay. the total bill is what 8760 for that year. Nine thousand bucks. Yeah. Now, how much are we um, spending on the fire truck? The debt every year. What do we make on a payment on that? Is that twenty-three thousand a year? Um, That's what's indicated on the budget. Yeah. Okay. So I was just wondering why we can't pay some of the fire truck down and not all of the house. We can't do that? No, because there's no bonds to, to get the permit. We, can't yeah. we, we, don't, yeah, have, we don't have a bond rating, and we cannot pay down a bond. We had to issue bonds to do the permanent borrowing, which we were required to do because we exceeded the number of, of one-year borrowings. We didn't roll this house into it because this would have cost the town more in the permanent borrowing. And since we can pay it off, it takes it off the books and we don't have to worry about coming up with the payments for it annually. Okay. I just want to make sure this how you devised the financial and if it was yeah, the best, best way to go. Yeah, the reason we did that was okay. because it would have been more expensive to roll it into the permanent borrowing. And uh, one other question is why, why don't we have a treasurer here? She went home sick. Okay. She was here? Yes. Yeah, yeah, she okay. Was. All right. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Um, any further debate on the motion uh, to transfer $250,000 in free cash to pay off the debt associated with 18 Common Street? Any further debate? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. No. Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, the motion is adopted. Um, Article 21. Mr. Moderator, I yes. make a motion to pass over Article 21 as no longer necessary. Now, I told you in the instructions, okay? Just tell me you don't have a motion for it and we're good. So we're all done. Article 21 um, is, we're, we're not going to take any action because there's no motion on it, uh, if I understand this correctly. Article 22. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer from free cash $50,000 to the OPEB Liability Trust Fund account. Motion has been made to transfer $50,000 from free cash to the OPEB Liability Trust Fund account. Is there a second? Uh, there's a second. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, Mr. Moderator, to clarify, um, OPEB is the other post-employment, stands for other post-employment benefits to help the uh, town understand what we needed it for. Mr. Holcar, you have a you're okay. All right. Any debate on the question? Okay. All those in favor of transferring from free cash fifty thousand bucks for OPEB liability trust fund account? Okay. Can you repeat that? Because we can't hear that way back here. Oh, pull that microphone good and close and speak uh, good and loud. I apologize. Um, OPEB stands for Other Post Employment Benefits. Okay. Are we good? Okay. Um, okay, all those in favor of transferring $50,000 from free cash to the OPEB Liability Trust Fund account say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Uh, the motion is adopted. Article 23, this is a two-thirds vote. Mr. Moderator, move that the town vote effective fiscal year 2023 to establish an opioid settlement fund special purpose stabilization fund in accordance with um, general um, general law 40 <coughs> section 5b and further authorize the deposit of all opioid settlement fund revenue into the newly established fund motion has been made uh, that the town establish effective uh, establish effective 20, fiscal 2023 an OPEB settlement fund special purpose stabilization fund uh, in accordance with general law chapter 40 section 5b and further to authorize the deposit of all opioid settlement fund revenue into the newly deposited uh, the newly established fund is there a second is there any discussion on the debate? Yeah, you want to explain what that whole, that whole <laughs> long line is? What the heck? What is all that? And is there a dollar amount to it? Or <clears throat> Okay, that's the next one. I want that. The Attorney General, in their infinite wisdom, decided that they would challenge all of the um, medical companies and, and drug stores and get an opioid settlement. The town of Brookfield received a whopping $5,000 plus, like a little over 5000 
We can only spend that money if we have this account, and we can only spend it out of that account, and our um, ambulance, fire, and police need Narcan. So that's why we're creating it, so that the money has a home. So if I understand it correctly, the state wants to give us 5,000 bucks and we, want, we need a place to put it. Exactly. Okay, any further discussion on the motion? Okay, uh, it's a two-thirds vote, um, so hopefully um, we exceed that in a voice vote, so we don't have to count. Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. We've got the vote. Thank you very much. Unanimous. Um, motion is adopted. Article 24. Mr. Moderator, I make a motion that the town vote to appropriate $5,586.42 from the Opioid Settlement Fund Special Purpose Stabilization Fund for the purchase of Narcan and or other opioid treatment expenses. Motion has been made to transfer $5,586.42 from the Opioid Settlement Fund Special Purpose Stabilization Fund for the purpose of Narcan and other opioid treatment expenses. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? How, how does this work? I mean, how many Narcans or what is this going to, the police department get some and the fire department get some? How many, how many uh, shots that the, the drug people are doing, how many shots is this 5,000 going to do? Would somebody from the emergency services please answer that question? Yes, we have a taker. Is there somebody that's going to, oh, there we go, very good. Hi, Donna LeFleur from uh, Brookfield Ambulance. Uh, we buy Narcan now, it goes about $45 for each dose, and it only lasts a limited time. Sometimes it's six months, sometimes it's a year, depending on how long the Narcan lasts. Uh, it depends on how much we, can, we have to buy. We would like the police department to be carrying it too, so that would be a big bonus if the police department started carrying Narcan along with uh, the ambulance. Okay, I think that was it. Any further debate on the motion? Okay, again, this is a uh, this is a two-thirds vote, uh, so hopefully it's unanimous. All those in favor of uh, appropriating five thousand five hundred eighty-six thousand forty-two cents from the opioid se uh, settlement special s settlement funds special purpose stabilization fund uh, to purchase Narcan and and or other opioid treatment uh, expenses say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. no. Uh, I heard one no, uh, so I'm going to declare it a two-thirds vote, uh, and the motion is adopted. All right, Article 25. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to establish a Roof Capital Special Purpose Stabilization Fund in accordance with General Law Chapter 40, Section 5B. A motion has been made to establish a, a Roof Capital Special Purpose Stabilization Fund in accordance with General Law Chapter 40, Section 5B. Is there a second? Is there any debate on the motion to establish a Roof Capital Special Purpose Stabilization Fund? Not a debate, but a, a question. What um, building are you referring to on this? Mr. I'm sorry, it's not for a specific building, it's for the roofs in town so that we have a, 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 a fund. If there's, we've had two catastrophic roof failures and we're heading for another one in this school. And if we start to fund a special stabilization account, the insurance company is not going to whack us as bad when, if we need to make a claim because we're doing something preventative. So this would go for all the roofs. Currently we're saving for the school roof though. Okay, we'll discuss that when that comes up. Any further debate on the motion? Yes. Uh, did we not uh, allocate 75000 last year for the roof? We did, but we're, we're creating a special, um, a special account to move that into so that we can continue to save for the roof. It's the next article. Okay. 
So that's the 75. So we're not adding. We're just no, we will be adding as well. There's another article. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. need the, the roof needs roughly $600,000 worth of work. So we're trying to do it in the small. Is there anybody from the school committee that could uh, could answer the question of where is the uh, the uh, what do they call that? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to allow that. This is really just to establish the fund and you know when we well, get that, to the I just want to bring up a point. Last year we talked about it that uh, the school choice was the money was supposed to be allocated to maintenance and we found out that it wasn't being allocated for maintenance um so i would like to know where that money's going um yeah uh, i i don't want to entertain that right now okay it's not relevant. It in a minute. thank you it's not relevant to the question all right, any further debate uh, on, the, on the motion to establish a roof capital special purpose stabilization fund in accordance with general law chapter 465B? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Uh, it's a unanimous vote. The motion is adopted. Article 26. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Move that the town vote to transfer $75,000 from the Capital Purchase Stabilization Fund to the newly established Roof Capital Special Purpose Stabilization Fund. Motion has been made to transfer $75,000 from the Capital Purchase Stabilization Fund to the newly established Roof Capital Special Purpose Stabilization Fund. Is there a second? Second. Is there any debate? Not a debate, just a question. Um, how much is in this capital special account? Right $163,988.63. And, and where's this money coming from, free cash? The money is, this is the 75 we put in last year, so okay. that will come out of this account and go into the roof. It's going to come from the capital purchase so it's stabilization going from fund. one bank account to another. Sounds like this money is going to be used at the elementary school to me. That's what the next one's going to be. Okay. Any further debate? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, all those, this is a two-thirds vote. Uh, so, all those in favor of transferring $75,000 from the Capital Purchase Stabilization Fund to the Roof Capital Special Purpose Stabilization Fund, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. It's unanimous. The motion is adopted. Article 27. Mr. Moderator, I make a motion that the town vote to transfer from free cash $75,000 to newly established roof special purpose capitalization stabilization for the purpose of funding a new roof for the elementary school. Motion has been made that the town transfer from free cash the sum of $75,000 uh, to the roof special purpose capital stabilization fund for the purpose of funding a new roof for the elementary school, is there a second? Okay. Is there any debate? Not a debate. What happened to school choice and how much is in school choice right now? School choice was designed to take care of the elementary school. They get big money and now you're coming to the townspeople for the, uh, to put a new top on it. So how much is in school choice and why are you coming after the townspeople for the money? Asking the school committee would be the one to ask answer what's in school choice. However, the town owns this building, and we're responsible for its maintenance. And this is not going to come to the townspeople. This is free cash. This is not touching the tax rate in any way, shape, or form. Okay, I know the town owns the elementary school, but sometimes uh, it's it's like they own the building. So well, we when I discussed this with this matter with with the principal. We were asked to cover half the roof, not the whole roof. They had intended at that time, when I originally spoke with her, to pay for half of the roof. To you, Mr. Moderate, to the advisory board, how much is in free uh, school choice? You should have that number. Yeah. Apparently not. Oh, right here. Currently, there's six hundred and fifty thousand nine hundred and fifty-four dollars and fifty-five cents. Did you get that? Yep. Does anybody know how much they need that we need to do the elementary school? 
Is there a figure on it yet? You mean the, how much the roof is going to cost? Yeah, yeah. About six hundred thousand. Okay, so you're pretty. They're pretty close right there now. They do use this consistently every year. They pay for the repairs in this building. With yes, I trade. realize that. Okay. All right. Any further debate? Um, the motion to transfer $75,000 from free cash for the roof special purpose capital stabilization fund for the purpose of funding a new roof for the elementary school. Any further debate? All those in favor, this is a two thirds, oh no, it's not a two thirds vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, the motion is adopted. Uh, Article 28. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer from free cash $5,500 for a new AccuVote voting machine. Uh, motion has been made that the town transfer from free cash $5,500 for a new uh, AccuVote voting machine. Is there a second? Second. Is there any debate on the motion to buy a new voting machine? All those in favor of transferring $5,500 for a new voting machine say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Uh, the motion is adopted. Um, article, the ayes have it, motion is adopted. Article 29. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer from free cash a sum of $9,000 or up to $9,000 for a new server for the police station. Motion has been made that the town raise an appropriate up to nine. I'm sorry, transfer, I'm sorry. Ooh. Hang on. Okay. That the town transfer up to $9,000 for a new server for the police station. Is there a second? Okay. Any debate? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Uh, Article 30. Mr. Moderator, I make a motion that the town vote to create an assistant library director position to be added to the town's classification plan as grade five and to raise and appropriate a sum of $42,688 to fund this new position. Okay. Um, our bylaws require that if a motion can be uh, divided, that it be divided, uh, which means, and what I'm saying is there's actually two motions here. Uh, one that they create the assistant library director position and the other is to allocate $42,688 to that position. Okay, so we're going to take those two questions up separately. Okay, so uh, the motion that we have at the moment is that the town uh, create an assistant library director position to be added to the town's classification, classification plan as grade five. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any debate? We haven't had a um, assistant library director in all these years. Now all of a sudden we want to uh, get a library assistant director. What's, what's, what's up with that? What's going on now? Can somebody answer his question? And I don't think it's needed, but someone can uh, explain that to me. Uh, uh, does the library director want to? Brenda Medville, library director. Um, this is a position we've been looking at for several years, more. Um, uh, it's not um, something that has happened in the surrounding towns, but it's something that really should. Um, this town supports this public library like no other town in this area. Um, so therefore, we are far busier than these other libraries. And we have statistics and numbers that show that we do serve the non-resident population. So with the talents that we need and the resources we need to use, that other public libraries are not using, um, we do the work for them. So I'm not the only one that is trained to provide books from out of state, um, from other libraries, from Comcast, from Boston. Um, 
So we have, so with all these other responsibilities, and when I'm not here, I mean, I'm over 20 years now, I'm gone for five weeks. I need somebody to cover paying bills when I'm not there, um, somebody to have a little more authority than a library assistant. So that's why we've created this position. Okay. All right, Mr. Holcraft, you got about 30 seconds or 20 seconds. Do you want, do you want anything more? <laughs> I calculated I got 42 seconds. Um, I, I still don't. Uh, 20 seconds now. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, she answered my question, but I still don't think it's needed. <laughs> Any further debate on the motion to create uh, an assistant library director position uh, and add it to the town's classific classification plan as grade five? Any further debate on that motion? Mr. Moderator, yes. I, I guess the question, I have a couple of different questions. Okay. Number one, how many hours is the library open? Number two, um, how, how, many, uh, how many weeks does she take off at a time that you would need somebody to be there to pay the bills and to do some of the other things? I mean, if you take a week off from work, you're not going to need to pay the bills for one week. You would be back there a week later to pay the bills and such. So I'm not understanding why we need an assistant librarian director at 42,000 and not an assistant librarian, but not the director position for a lot less salary than what they're proposing. All right, so um, how many hours are you open? 29 hours a week plus. 29 hours a week plus is the number of hours that are open. Uh, and. Uh, I'm a, uh, so there's a question I think she asked about, um, you know, vacation. I'm uncomfortable with this question uh, because I think it's delving into an employee's stuff and I'm a little uncomfortable with it. Yes. But you understand the question. I, I, I do appreciate the question, um, but uh, do you want to address that at all? Do you understand what the question is? But when I take a vacation? She's questioning if you take a week off, you know, then next the week you come back, you can take care of the bills and things like that. And so. So I've been, I've been doing that. Um, but I also need a leader in my place when I'm not there. Okay. Okay. So she needs a leader in the place when she's not there. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, she's not done yet. <laughs> she's got about 15 seconds. Okay. That, um, I, the thing of it is, is that you, she implied that she's taking five weeks off. She's not taking five weeks straight off. So she's only taking a week or two weeks off at a time. Like the rest of us in this world, you have to prepare when you're leaving to go on vacation okay. and prepare when you come back. Okay. So I, I don't understand why you need an assistant director to do that. Fair enough. Time. Move the question. Okay. Um, really um, back. Yeah, really. Uh, um, um, so, did you want to say something? Yes. Okay, so I'm not going to accept be that because she, she came up to the microphone. Okay. And, go ahead. Okay, that's fine. Um, I just want to say that, um, I mean, I obviously support this. I'm one of the library trustees, um, and I support a lot of what Brenda does. Um, there's a lot of behind the scenes that go, that go on um, that she's in support of over, and she does certainly does not get paid for all of the time that she commits to our community. And this includes a lot of things. It includes the things that she's brought in as far as building community um, by way of we allow people to do free um, faxes and copying for free for the community. All of her knowledge that she has, we could not, as library trustees, we could not replace that right now. However, um, the current, what comes with this assistant position, she's very knowledgeable. Um, she clearly doesn't have as many years as Brenda, but our hope is that she can start helping with the process so that when Brenda's ready to leave us, we're not stuck with nobody <laughs> as library trustees. Because that's probably going to cost us a lot more as a town, bringing in somebody new that is new to the town that has less knowledge. Um, so 
And there's one other thing, and I'm sure I'm close out of time here. You have 30 um, seconds. So um, the other thing I was going to say is that um, the library is also, it has a security system. <laughs> And we get notified as library trustees, a couple of us, but Brenda also get no gets notified. She comes on her off hours if I can't make it to the library to unlock it and unlock the, and do the code. So that's another big thing too. There's a lot of things that she does that are not accounted for here. So okay. that's it, thank you. Excellent. Okay, any further debate? Um, the motion to create uh, an assistant library position uh, to be added to the town's classification plan as grade five. I had a question. Yeah. Uh, Come to the microphone and speak clearly. My name is John Washburn, called Maple Street. Yeah. Uh, how many employees do you have? That's what I'm uh, asking. How many, he's, he's asking how many employees yeah. the library has. Six part-time employees. Okay. Uh, and none of them are Could you come to the microphone and, yeah, and, and get away that None of them can fill in for you, is that what you're saying? You need somebody to full time in order to fill in for you? Uh, okay, you're going to have to come, I'm sorry, you're going to have to come to the microphone and. We're just looking at what's best for the community and how to serve. That's the answer to your question. Any further? Uh, my, my thing is, is you already have somebody available that can fill in for you for this this time. Okay, so I don't want a discussion going on between the two of you. I just don't want that to happen. If you want to oppose it, oppose it. That, you know, make all those statements that you want to make. That's fine, but I'm, I don't want to have a, a conversation between the two of you. All right, thank you. All right. Mr. Moderator, yes. please move the question. A motion has been made to move the question. Is there any objection to moving the question and closing the debate? There's no objection, so we're going to vote on the motion uh, to create an assistant library director position to be added to the town's classification plan as grade five. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. 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 The ayes have it. Uh, that portion of Article 30 has been adopted. Uh, now we need to have, I, I'm sorry, now we have a motion before us that the town raise and appropriate 42600 and 88 bucks uh, to fund uh, this new position. Um, so, um, is there any debate on uh, raising and appropriating $42,688 for this position? No debate, just a couple questions here. How many hours uh, is this person going to be working? And are we going to have her working at the same time Brenda's working? Uh, can somebody answer the question? Number of hours and are they going to be hours concurrent with the current library director? I think is the correct. Question. Thank you. Uh, do we have? So the question is about us working together? No, the, there's two questions. One is how many hours are associated with this $42,688 salary? Uh, it's between 29 and 32. We haven't ironed it out yet, but that's the amount. 29 and 32 hours, somewhere in the middle there. They're still working that out. And then the, ex, the next question is, will they be concurrent? I mean, are you going to be there at the same time? I think that's the question. Yes, now my hours can stagger and I can be there during closed hours and get more work done. Um, we're working, you know, with the 350th. We have all these projects going on. We have field trips going on right now. Doing everything while we're open and busy is not conducive to uh, being successful in what we want to accomplish. Is that answer? Those are the questions you all set? No. Okay. Um, is there any further debate on um, raising and appropriate $42,688 to fund the, the uh, assistant library director position? 
Uh, hearing none, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. 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 The ayes have it. There's 42,688 bucks for the assistant director library position. Article number uh, 31. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to create an assistant treasurer slash collector position to be added to the town's classification plan at grade five. Motion has been made uh, that the town create an assistant treasurer collector position to be added to the town's classification plan at grade five. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Any debate? Or questions? You know, town is getting bigger and bigger tonight. I don't know. Your tax bills are going to be going way up. How many hours is this person going to be working and uh, uh, when? <laughs> and what's the pay? There is no pay because we need to create a position. It was not intended to fund this position yet. I'm looking at trying to regionalize this position so it has the least monetary impact possible on the town. How many hours do you know yet? We don't know. We need to develop the job description, but I didn't want to go through all of that effort if, if it wasn't going to be created. I think the townspeople so need to know how many step, hours. Well, this is step one. So if it's created, then we'll go in and look at the hours and what the job description is. I'll see if I can regionalize the position and share it with other people so that they're not here and when they're not a full-time employee for us. And right. then, and exactly. then we'll we'll come back next year and fund it. And if people don't like it, then we don't fund it. All right. Thank you. Uh, any further debate on creating uh, an assistant treasurer collector position to be added to the town's classification plan at grade five? Any further debate? Uh, all those in favor of creating this position, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. No. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article uh, 31. 32. 32. I'm sorry. Mr. Moderator, move that the town vote to delete in its entirety the following section of the general bylaws. <coughs> Chapter 11. Chapter 2, sorry. Chapter 2, Town Meeting Section 19, or take any action relative thereto. Uh, I'm sorry. A motion has been made uh, to delete Section 19 of Chapter 2 uh, in its entirety from the general bylaws. Is there a second of the motion? Second. Second. Uh, is there any, is there any, is there any, there's been a second. Uh, is there any debate? Moderator's got a question. This is chapter 19. Oh, I'm sorry. So this is removing the citizen's petition um, bylaw. Is that correct? What it's doing is removing a carbon copy of the state law. So the citizen petition under this general law has to be followed regardless of whether or not there's a bylaw. However, if the state decides to change the law the way this stands, ours will be in conflict. So if we take this out, we still have to follow the law, we still have to do all the same exact things for a citizen's petition. It does not change anybody's right to have a citizen's petition. Thank all you. it does is it removes the extra language out of our Thank language. you. Any further debate on the motion to delete from the general bylaws section 19 of chapter 2? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, the motion is adopted. Uh, section 19 is uh, deleted. Uh, article 33, sorry. Mr. Moderator, I make a motion that the town vote to amend the general bylaws, chapter four, advisory committee, section one, as follows, by striking the following language and inserting in place thereof the language in bold and warrant article 33 as it appears. The motion has been made to amend the general bylaws, chapter four, advisory committee, section one, uh, by striking the word and number seven uh, and inserting the word in number five. Is there a second? Okay. All right. Is there any debate? Just want to explain. Could you explain that in simple terms? What do you guys just want to have a th three for a quorum or a set of five? Uh, uh, Mr. Moderator, yeah. we have vigorously tried to maintain a level of nine volunteers on the advisory committee. <laughs> nine or seven? No, I'm, I'm trying to give the history behind it nine advisory members um, for a number of years 
When I joined the board, it was nine, then it went to seven because we had the lack of volunteers. Now we're down to four, so if we not bring it down to five, um, we have a different quorum situation and there's a possibility that someone in the good of their hearts with their time will volunteer. And um, we definitely need more volunteers in this community. And that is why we're, we're decreasing it. We can still do an effective job with five uh, rather than having two vacant seats, basically. So what do you have now, seven? If we have it seven, seven but we have four people. So you got to bring it down to five to get a quorum then? Right. So if you have three people, you can still have a quorum? Yeah. Okay, now you can't do that because it's set seven, right? Correct. Okay. Any further debate on the motion to reduce the number of members of the advisory committee from seven to five? All those in favor of doing so, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. The motion is adopted. Uh, article number 34. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to amend the general bylaws by adding the following. Chapter 1, Section 7. A quorum of any board or committee, whether elected or appointed, of the town of Brookfield shall consist of a majority of the sitting members, unless otherwise governed by Massachusetts general law. A motion has been made that the town amend the general bylaws by adding the following. Chapter 1, Section 7, a quorum of any board or committee, whether elected or appointed, of the town uh, of Brookfield shall consist of a majority of the, I'm going to strike sitting because I think that's silly, members unless otherwise governed by Massachusetts general law. Why? What happens if they're standing? I'm totally serious. The members that are not appointed, you have a board of seven, and you don't have seven, then you have seven members, that's the quorum, you need a seven more. If the city member... I'll leave it in. It's sitting. I disagree, but we'll go for it. Is there a second of the motion? Second. Is there any further debate? All those in favor of... Um, this 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 motion say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. Motion is adopted. Uh, Article 35. Mr. Moderator, move that the town vote to amend Chapter 15, Section 14, Vacations with Pay of the Personnel Bylaws by striking the language crossed out and replacing there with the bold language immediately following as presented in the warrant book article 35. Motion has been made that the town amend chapter 15 section 14 vacations with pay of the personnel bylaws by striking the language crossed out and replacing there with uh, the bold language immediately following uh, as presented in warrant article 35. Is there a second? second. Is there any debate? All those in favor? Uh, of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Oh. I have a question. Oh, there's a question. So right now as the body uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to get Yeah, no, I totally get it. Um as the bylaw sits right now, they have to be an employee of the town for one year before they get vacation time? Yes. And this bylaw would eliminate that, so somebody who comes in and works two months gets a vacation. Three months. Okay. All right, Mr. Moderator, I make a motion to pass this article over. Uh, that's a motion to postpone indefinitely, yes. which was postpone indefinitely. There we go. Thank you very much. There's a motion to postpone this indefinitely, which, if it passes, will kill the motion and will go on to the next article. Is there a second to the motion? There is a second. Okay, you can debate. Okay. Um, I think that it, there, there is some type of, people have to serve their due time. And by giving someone a vacation in three months, five months down the road, they could leave the employment. We've paid them for vacation time. So we've paid them time to take off when they've barely gotten out of their, their um, 
probation period, and, and I don't think that that's correct. I think that the bylaw should sit as it is, where they have to work one full year. Most companies, and maybe we're not a company, but we do have personnel laws, and that should we we should go with the same type of laws that other comp uh, that companies are using as their benefit package. Why would we give someone a, a vacation in three months? I understand they can accumulate sick time and they can earn it over a period of time, but to give a person vacation time after a 90-day period is wrong. They, they need to serve their, their, their due diligence by working and showing us that they can work for the town and not just come in, work a little bit, and take some time off. I wish I could do that. Any further? I don't think so. Okay. Any further debate on the motion to um, postpone indefinitely, which would kill this thing? There is some debate. I just think that with the employment situation being what it is right now, and unemployment being so low, so many positions being open, that we need to be competitive. And the rest of the world, you start a new job, you get two weeks vacation in the first year period. It's not, you have to, you know, you can't take it until you've been there a year. That's not the way the world works right now. So I would, I'm not sure what that means as far as the motion goes, but that's my opinion You're about supporting the article. This. You're supporting the motion? Yes. Okay. Thank you. No. Well, oh, I'm sorry. You're, you're opposing the motion. I'm sorry. Yes. Of the motion. Thank I'm you very much. The the, yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, it's the motion to postpone indefinitely. She opposes the motion to postpone indefinitely. Thank you. Okay. Any further debate on the motion to postpone indefinitely, which would kill this? Okay. All right. So all those in favor of postponing this indefinitely, say aye. Aye. All those opposed to postponing this indefinitely and killing the motion say no. No. Uh, the no's have it. We're back to the main motion, uh, which is uh, to amend Chapter 15, Section 14, Vacations with Pay of the Personal Bylaws by striking the language crossed out and replacing therewith the bold language immediately following as presented in the warrant Article 35. Is there any further debate on the motion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Uh, the ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Article 30. Article 36. Is that you? Uh, uh, hang on one moment. Sure. I would like to move that we address Articles 37 and 38 out of order, please. There is a motion uh, to take Articles 37 uh, and 38 uh, out of order. Uh, so those are uh, uh, initiative petitions uh, that are designed to uh, make uh, town clerk uh, and the um, tax collector uh, appointed positions. I got that correct, right? Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, so the motion is to take these up out of order, take them up right now, okay? Does everybody understand what the motion is? Is there a second to the motion? Yeah. There's a second to the motion. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of taking these out of order, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. No. Uh, sorry, I gotta have a count. We do that. We have these people. I know. I say no. I did not attend six months of meetings. <laughs> <laughs> and do oh, ten sorry. hours of minutes a week. Oh, asleep at the wheel, Aaron. Terribly sorry. All those in favor of the motion to take these out of order, please stand. Thank you. 
his husband's living in Oregon. His wife is living in Oregon. Well, you eyes are really tired, because, man, if you, if you guys said it loud enough, I would have called it. Sorry about that, but we got to count them. This could be another I have an hour to go in this one. And I bet we're going to have at least a half an hour to be on this jewel box. At least. Thirty-six. All right, you may be seated. All those opposed, please stand. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call this. I'm sorry. Please be seated. Uh, we're going to take the motions out of order. Uh, so we now have. Um, uh, citizen, I'm calling it Citizen Petition 1. It's not labeled in your uh, warrant. Uh, I believe Mr. Taft is going to make a motion relative to this. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to change the Brookfield uh, town clerk position from an elected official to an appointed official under the general law, Chapter 41, uh, Section 1B. Okay, a motion is made to make the town clerk an appointed position. Is there a second to the motion? Okay, there's a second debate. So the reason for bringing this up is that we have only two uh, elected officials, full-time elected officials in town. Um, and by, by being an elected official, you have to have a residency in town. When you, when you have a couple of very important positions. Your population in town is what, 4,300 and 1,300 as uh, seniors, so your pool of potential candidates is very little. When you have an appointed position, it removes the um, residency requirement also gives the employee the opportunity to get in that position and stay there for as long as they want without having to run for that position every three years. And if they decide to move or relocate, they could move out of town and still maintain their position. It really is a benefit to the town and to the employee. Thank you. Okay. Is there any further debate on the motion? Um, the gentleman down back started walking before anybody else raised their hand, so. Scott O'Day, uh, 27 Wibber Road. I, for the life of me, can't figure out why you people want to keep giving away your rights to elect people. I just can't figure that out. I don't understand, I understand what you're doing, but I don't understand why you want to give up your rights. We don't have many rights left in this state at all. And if you give up your right to elect people in this town, that's just one more snowball that goes down towards Boston and you lose your rights. That's all I have to say. Can I get two minutes on the clock? Two minutes on the clock. All right, that's enough. Don Taft, question. How many uh, elected town clerks are there in the state? As far as I know, most of them are elected, but not all. What's the number? I can't give you a number, Dave, but I know that it is more more that are elected than are um, appointed. That's it. That's it. You're up. Um, I'm opposed to this uh, amendment for the following reasons. When I go to cast my ballot every year to vote, I get to choose who I want. Mike serves at the pleasure of me and the rest of us in this room. If I'm not happy with Mike, I can vote for somebody else if they're on the ballot. Mm -hmm. If I'm not happy with an appointment, I have to vote against Brad, get him out first. Puts a layer. You know, to, 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 you're going to appoint someone. It, it, it makes my vote less, I feel. So I think we should leave it alone. They have one person, one vote. If we don't like the person, we vote him out. Yeah. And I have to have another hurdle to go over. Thank you. Uh, Linda Lincoln, um, I am against um, an appointed town clerk. 
Uh, the town has been very fortunate the past 35 years of having two people who have a love for the town of Brookville, myself and, and including Mike Seri. Uh, we were both born and brought up here in this community and we care about the community and the people in this community. You appoint somebody to this position and they're just going to, they're coming in for the money. They're not going to care about the people in this town. You can come, we know, we know the history of the town. We know the people of the community and it's and if somebody came into your office and wanted to know for an example where did Mary Smith's grandmother live we know where these people are you get an appointed person they don't care about the, the people in the community they just care about doing their job and, and, and they just want to make the money. That is all that they're interested in becoming an appointed. And uh, I feel that this position should be an elected position because uh, you're very fortunate to have the person that you have here. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wants to speak in favor of this motion? In favor of it? Okay, go ahead. Having a resident as an employee as an employee is a benefit of the town however we do have a tremendous number of employees that are non-residents and they truly care about this town and you get uh, a much broader spectrum of people with an appointed position rather than an elected position Chris Gorman, 32 Pine. I'd like to bring up the fact that if uh, we do have an appointed official, it's almost impossible to remove them from their job without violations and or um, write-ups. Um, once you're an, elect an elected official, every three years, Mr. Siri has to vote, has to run, has to put his name on the ballot. He has to do his job and prove to us that he does his job. He does that job. If we appoint somebody, you're going to just be stuck for the next 30 years with whoever's been in. And uh, then you'll really be uh, regretful to this decision. Anything further? Yep. Uh, Doris Matthews, 46 West Main. Um, as a citizen of Brookfield, I am not in favor of taking away a citizen's right to choose the candidate of their choice. There is no guarantee that the candidate pool will broaden. That is an assumption. I am not in favor of this whatsoever. Thanks. Okay. Any further debate? Gary Lincoln, Playbox Street. You just can't come in off the street. Get right close, Gary. You just can't come in off the street and uh, take over the town clerk's job. It's not. It's not possible. It's too complicated. You have to have some experience. Mike Seary. Uh, understudied my wife when she was a town clerk for 20 years or something and uh, and so he knew what he was doing you just can't come up off the street and take over the town clerk's job okay any further debate all right uh, there's no further debate all those in favor uh, of making town clerk an appointed position uh, according to uh, the general law cited, say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. No has had it. The motion is defeated. Uh, Article 38, uh, Mr. Taft. I'm calling it Article 38. It's, uh, it's what I call that I one. I withdraw the motion. Uh, the motion has been, well, yeah, okay. Okay, motion's been withdrawn. So now we're back to, where are we back to? Article 36, I believe, or 35. 36, thank you. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Moderator, Kevin Arcola, uh, 130 Long Hill Road, Chair of the Brookfield Planning Board. This article is sponsored by the Brookfield Planning Board. Uh, we want to uh, have the town vote to amend the zoning bylaw section 8G, medical adult use marijuana facilities, and section 4D6, use regulation table. According to the uh, strikeout in bold uh, insertions as they appear in the, uh, in the warrant booklet. All right, 
There's a motion that's been made uh, that the town amend zoning bylaws section 8G, uh, medical slash adult use marijuana facilities, and section 4D6 use regulation table as presented in warrant article 36. So uh, before you get going, let's hear the report from the uh, planning board. Uh, I guess it's a report and recommendation. Right. All right, so in the front of the uh, warrant article book, you'll find the Brookfield Planning Board report on the town marijuana zoning bylaw amendments. Louder. Can you speak up a little? Sure. So uh, at a public hearing on Wednesday, April 5, 2023, at which a quorum was present, the Brookfield Planning Board reviewed and voted, it says five to zero, but it's actually uh, uh, four in favor and one no vote, to support the following amendments to the town's current adult recreation marijuana bylaw. And the summary and rationale for those amendments are below. Well, would you like me to read what's written here, or can we? We're good. Uh, we're good. Okay. Okay. So, if you would like to um, defend the motion to adopt this thing, uh, you're you're more than happy to do that. You get two minutes. When you're ready. All right. So. Mr. Moderator, we're, we're proposing these changes because we feel that the current marijuana zoning bylaw, as it's written, uh, is inadequate to protect the town in the event that uh, someone wants to uh, establish a marijuana business here uh, and feels that they're uh, inordinately constrained by the areas in which the current law allows this to happen. On the map that's displayed behind the advisory table there next to the flag, you see two uh, orange areas. Those are uh, the areas uh, designated by the current bylaw as the marijuana overlay district. Uh, that is the only place currently in which uh, marijuana businesses can be uh, located. Uh, at present, one of those areas, the eastern one, uh, is entirely covered with other businesses. And to the west, all of the lots are uh, currently uh, occupied, not for sale, or uh, not available otherwise. If someone wanted to come in to town to uh, establish some sort of marijuana business uh, and found that we actually had a uh, uh, an effective uh, ban by uh, delegating it to those two areas, they could in initiate litigation which, uh, which might uh, allow them to locate their business anywhere at all in the town. So that's the primary purpose. The other thing is that you since, don't have much time left. Okay, since the last time we uh, amended this bylaw, the, the uh, business has changed and now open, uh, open air growing is also available. This is something that a number of citizens have expressed an interest in. So we're trying to accommodate that. Your time's up. Okay. All right. Any further debate uh, on the motion to amend the bylaws according to uh, what's printed in the warrant book for Article 36? I got two minutes. You got two minutes. Make sure I have them. Here you go. Uh, first of all, I was on the plane. Oh, hey. You're all set. Yeah, two minutes, two seconds. <laughs> oh, I did. Um, on the planning board, just is in the warrant book. It says a five, five to zero. It was four, 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 and one against. Um, oh, I want to correct that up. I want to correct that. Four, four. The marijuana laws. I think you made that correction. So I'm making that correction again. Good. Um, I want to straighten something out here. You all uh, like money. You all like sir, money. Well, this is about the I marijuana. You, this is want, about marijuana. No, I want you to address me. I don't want well, you to turn to the uh, audience. I want you to turn and talk to me. Thank you. Okay. All right, I'll face you. I want to be I'm rude. sorry. I know. It's okay. horrible. But. Um, as you know, in this town, we got bylaws on signs, okay? And my sign is always being attacked. Um, 
and other sign bylaws on other signs are grossly violated and they don't pick they don't do anything to them but they pick up on mine um, as my sign says all zones for the marijuana as your sign says but the, the zoning bylaw states you can only have such a big sign it can only be so big so when I said on that sign all zones all zones that are going to be in the law and book that we are voting on not all zones in the town it's the zones that we are voting on tonight in the law and book so you people that put this garbage out okay and the sign is correct you should be ashamed of yourself so that's the way it is okay thank you very much okay. enjoy the yellow sign <laughs> Any further debate? Any further debate? Mr. Moderator, I'm in favor of this amendment for the following reasons. We have a marijuana bylaw. It exists. And it's in those two red zones. And what we have right now in that red zone is saying that if I have property in that red zone, I can open up a, a facility and it has to be 15 feet from my neighbor. I think that's about from me to you. 15 feet. I can grow, I can manufacture, I can retail, I can do all that 15 feet from your house. You can look out the window, you can see my whole operation. That is not fair to our neighbors that are in that zone. That's what's gonna get us to the AG's office and get struck down. It's not right, they can follow the suit. This is this is basically almost a virtual ban. That could get us to, uh, to, to get uh, to the AG's office. If it gets to that point, we will have no bylaw. And then a judge will decide where go, what goes where. And we don't want that. We have the opportunity to have control over this. And we should take that opportunity. The planning board has worked ridiculously on this for the last year and a half, just on this recent amendment, plus all the time they did previously when Sharon was on there, and went over everything. This bylaw is more restrictive than what we have now. Everything is by special permit. This is special permit. And this is, there's so many layers to get to. And again, this is just for the opportunity to ask for permission. That's all it is, if, if, if this passes. If we don't pass this, that means that our, we're telling our neighbors in that zone, ha, too bad for you, it's 15 feet from your house. And there's nothing that anybody can do because that's our current bylaw. And that's not fair. We've got to do the right thing for all of our neighbors. This new bylaw says you can grow with a 200 foot setback. 200 feet from all property zones, all property line, every single property line. That makes you your acreage at least 10 to 15 acres, okay? Let's put it not on Route 9, let's put it where it belongs, out of sight, with setbacks that are fair for all of our neighbors. We have to do this. If we don't, then it's gonna be ordered from us from, from a third party. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Any further debate? Maureen Maypack from Rice Corner Road. I have a question around the rationale for outdoor cultivation given the terpenes or the essential, essential oils from marijuana plants can travel up to a mile. Uh, 200 feet's not really enough to stop that. So I'd like to hear from someone on the planning board on okay. the rationale. So you want rationale for the setbacks? Is that what you're saying? Rationale for yeah. allowing outdoor cal cultivation. Oh, okay. okay. Well, uh, outdoor, outdoor cultivation is now allowed by Massachusetts general law, and it is regulated by the Cannabis Control Commission. Uh, the 200-foot setbacks from property lines were uh, part of the solution to the, uh, the issue that is raised about the odors from the uh, from the plants, and that only a larger plots of greater than 10 acres would be viable for, uh, or have enough area to actually make cultivation worthwhile. And secondly, the, the odors are only uh, produced by the plants during a few weeks of, at a time. So during the growing season, which is relatively short here at these latitudes, it, it would be a few weeks. And I, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly how many, but it was like maybe around four. So um, that's the rationale for that. Okay. You, you still have about 20, 20 seconds. It's my understanding that that's when it's strongest, when the flower's budding, but they still stink from the essential oils. So. Okay. <coughs> Any further debate? 
Chris Gorman, Brookfield Planning Board. I voted in favor for this, uh, mostly due to the fact that the original bylaw is um, is not conducive to our town. It's very uh, almost illegal to the way it's set right now. Um, it definitely opens up uh, the town for um, for problems. Um, if somebody wanted to go to the state and uh, and possibly uh, bring us to court, it would definitely fail. Um, that was the reason we took a year and a half to go over this, um, to get all the, everything you see here, all the additions, all the deletions, um, and special permit is required for all outdoor grows, all indoor grows, all grows, all pot stores, everything is required with a special permit. So that still gives the planning board um, carte blanche to, 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 to guide the grow up or the store in some way. Um, this doesn't just allow a store to come in, it doesn't allow a shop, a shop to come in. It definitely gives us still guidance, which the other one really does not give us. It, it, it's, it's leaving us open. Um, it's definitely a good, a good bill that we put together. We had um, multiple people there. Um, we had multiple public hearings. Um, there was maybe 10 people that showed up and, and gave their inputs. We definitely worked with them and their concerns. Uh, and it's a it's a good bylaw for us to uh, to, to work with, and, and, and it gives us um, it, it gives us ultimate say at the end of the day, and that's that's what this bylaw is for. Sharon Mahoney, former chair of the planning board. Um, I participated um, intensely in the development of this bylaw. I want to stress two things. Odor control was brought up. It is in the restrictions under Section 8. Cultivation and product manufacturing facilities shall install odor control technology and regularly maintain such equipment in working order. The planning board, to broaden this point, under this bylaw would have control of such conditions. Under this bylaw, Planning board can only control where these facilities would go. This bylaw would allow specific control under the special permit process for such things as odor, appropriateness of location, appropriateness of the buildings, um, the, uh, which districts these go in. If you look at the use regulation table on section four, there's only several sections where cultivation is even allowed and there are setbacks involved. So this actually gives the town more control rather than less. And to the point there, the reason that that left-hand side, the westernmost side of the Overly District is so small is because a school opened up. And Mass General Law recommends that there's a buffer zone around schools. So that section is even smaller than it used to be, rendering us more liable to be um, to be uh, litigated against by a potential uh, business person who wants to establish a district. If this, may, if this stays, we might be open to that type of litigation. This gives the town more control. It's another layer of control of the land use. In addition to the other um, requirements, including host community agreements, security, background checks, public hearings, this is the only one where abutters would have a say at a meeting and those those concerns would be recorded as a matter of record going into the planning board's decision to grant a special permit. Your, your time is up. Thank you. Any further debate? Okay. All those in favor of uh, amending the zoning bylaw section 8G medical slash adult use marijuana facilities and uh, section 4D6 use regulation table as presented in the warrant article 36. Uh, this is going to require a two-thirds vote. Just need to announce that. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. No. <laughs> Sounds like two-thirds to me. The motion is adopted. Uh, okay, so now uh, we've already done uh, the uh, two initiatives, two citizens petitions. Uh, now we have a, uh, um, a non-binding flag and seal citizens petition. Uh, do we have someone to make a motion? 
You can watch, please. Mr. Moderator, I move that Brookfield approve the non-binding resolution to change the flag and seal of Massachusetts as printed in the warrant. Okay, a motion has been made uh, to um, make a non-binding uh, resolution recommending that our representatives, if I understand the, 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 um, the warrant correctly, uh, in support of uh, the um, report of the commission for the new flag and seal. Okay, is that about it? Um, as, written in the, as written in the warrant. Yeah, almost. We're not advising our representatives to vote on anything because the commission is already established, so it's more to move it ahead with the support of the towns. Okay. Thanks. Do you want to... Go ahead. Oh, is there a second? I heard a second, so go. Okay. My name's Sherry Zitter. I live at 149 Lake Road, and thanks to everyone for hanging in for these last two votes. Um, I love living in Brookfield and in Massachusetts. I love our spunkiness that sparked the American Revolution. And I'm really sad about how we treated the original occupants here. We can't change history, but we can make one small step towards better relations by supporting a change in the state seal and flag. And Jeff, would you mind just um, um, pulling out the flag so people can see what it looks like right now? The current flag has a settler's arm with a sword raised above the head of an Indian, and the motto in Latin says, by the sword we seek peace. The image of the Indian is not historically accurate. It was modeled after a native person from the West rather than New England, and the broadsword is modeled after one used by Miles Standish to behead native people. Not a great image for our young children to study in school. Massachusetts has changed our state flag several times over the years, and this change in the flag has bipartisan support and a bipartisan commission that's already been funded by our Republican last governor with indigenous representation. <clears throat> so now for the first time in 140 years, we're really undertaking a serious review of our symbols, and all of us are invited to give input over the coming months. The cost of the change will be minimal. In 2017, a lot of us gathered at the Tobin Beach campgrounds to honor the artifacts unearthed there and to preserve the native burial grounds. A yes vote here continues our local tradition of honoring our indigenous friends and neighbors. So 75 towns in Massachusetts have supported this positive change so far, some of them unanimously. So let's join them tonight by voting yes. Thanks. Yeah. All right, any further debate? Right. All those in favor of the non-binding resolution associated with the uh, flag and seal, uh, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. No. Uh, I need to count. All those in favor, please stand and constables.
The ayes have it. Uh, the motion is adopted. Uh, oh, so the total was 62 yes, 36 no. Uh, the ayes have it. Motion is adopted. All right. Um, final uh, motion is a, or the final article is a citizen's petition uh, with regard to a motion that's going to be made. Sorry. Right. Marty Vanish, oh, okay, so Marty, please get right up to that microphone, speak good and loud. Marty Vanish, Brookfield. I move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 to fund, file, and prosecute an appeal to the Worcester Superior Court of the decision of the District Court, case number 1869-CD00257, relative to enforcing the cease and desist order of the zoning enforcement officer of the town and the zoning bylaws and decisions of the Zoning Board of Appeals against Daniel Plort individually and his manager of DP23 DP Bulldogs LLC for the property located at 5 Quaybog Street, Brookfield, Massachusetts. A motion has been made that the town raise and appropriate a sum of $25,000 to fund, file, and prosecute an appeal to the Superior Court of the decision of the District Court, case number 1869-CV-000257, uh, relative to enforcing the cease and desist order of the Zoning Enforcement Officer of the town and the zoning bylaws and decisions of the Zoning Board of Appeals against Daniel Ford individually and uh, as manager of DP23 Bulldogs LLC for the property located at 5 Quaybog Street, Brookfield, Massachusetts. Is there a second to the motion? There is a second to the motion. You may debate, you have two minutes. There are two issues that make this petition necessary. Number one is the noise, seven days a week, eight hours a day. This has affected the quality for many longtime residents of Brookfield. One has already sold their home on South Maple Street because of the noise. Many senior citizens in the most affected areas do not have the option to move and are forced to endure the constant noise. The other issue is the enforcement of the town's zoning laws. The owner has personally cost the town an excessive amount of money with appeals in East Brookfield District Court by the law. So I, I told you about your comments. So I'm sending these comments. Yeah, and I told you that I was going to call these out of order because you're you're going after the owner and his motivations and such, and I will not allow you to do that. Uh, I thought you approved it. Uh, I did not. Okay. By misunderstanding. Okay. Oh, so how do I word this? There is the intention to open a dealership at that location. Um, it, um, again, th that has really nothing to do with this, as I understand it. So, I, I so, I guess the question that I, my email to you said, you need to be to demonstrate or you need to explain why this is why the town needs to spend twenty five thousand dollars on this. These, these are the issues, the reasons why the town needs to spend it. Oh. Uh, one moment. Okay, so here, here's an issue. The owner is required to get a special permit for the track due to the expansion of operation far beyond the grandfather. Yeah, okay, I'm going to hold you right there. Just uh, finish in, a, in conclusion. It is important that the town support the zoning enforcement officer and the zoning board of appeals, for this will set a precedent that lets others violate the careful planning that keeps Brookfield the desired desirable community that we enjoy. Dedicating this funding to the prosecution of this matter in Worcester Superior Court will ensure that money is available if needed. 
the town can opt to use funds from the existing legal services account for this purpose, and upon completion of the court case, return these allocated funds to free cash. That's true. Okay. No more comments. Okay. Yeah, Next. Mr. Moderator. Yes. Okay. My understanding is. Um, you, you, hold on one second. Um, you hit the you hit the mute button on the microphone, so no one's going to be able to hear you. Uh, I don't. Okay. I think you're good. Oh. So my understanding is they're looking for between twenty-five and fifty thousand dollars for legal fees. There's twenty-five thousand. Okay. Twenty-five thousand. Um, my suggestion would be that the residents who it bothers get a GoFundMe account, like my husband and I did, to fight the tanks. No applause, please. Why is the town spending an excessive amount of money on legal fees to continue to fight the racetrack? They've gone to court, they've lost, they've gone to court, they've lost, whatever the case may be. It, it is a specialty group of people in this town who don't like the noise, who want to get rid of the racetrack, then they should collectively get together and they should hire an attorney on their own, like the group of people in my neighborhood did, to fight the tanks. If they can't do that, then they're SOL. But the whole thing of it is, is that the rest of the taxpayers in this town, who it's not bothering, because I hear them every time they're running, they shouldn't have to take out of their pocket to pay the legal fees for that specialty group who don't like it. So I suggest they all pony up and pay it themselves, like my husband and I and the neighborhood in my area did. Because we shouldn't have to pay for their legal fees. I'm in, uh, Mr. Moderator, I'm an objective of this uh, amendment for the following reasons. $25,000 is just the entry fee. When we lose this, and we will, we're going to be on the hook for his attorney's fees and possibly civil uh, litigation damages. Um, we have to overcome a district judge's ruling. And if anybody has read the transcripts of this case, they will see that we lost, we didn't just lose, we lost terribly. They're not in violation of our noise ordinance. We have no standing if we go to Superior Court. We just can't file an appeal because we lost. We have to have some substance to that appeal. And I'm sorry, but this, this just doesn't have it. Um, and I'd also like to make a motion that the business owner, he's not a resident, if he wants to speak, then we allow him to say something because he is a business owner in our town. So I'd like to have that motion on the floor. Anybody object to the owner speaking when it comes time? Does anybody object to that? Okay. Yeah. So he can speak if he wants to. Are, are you in favor or in opposition of the motion? <laughs> I'd like to see this struck. Okay. Is there anybody in favor of the motion? I, I, I just want to get an, an equal, I, I just want to go back and forth a little bit here. That's all. As a town person, I don't think I should pay for it. I think the people in that neighborhood should pay for it. That's my opinion, so okay. I voice what the lady yeah. before me said, so that's... Okay. Uh, yeah, I agree that's with right. the woman who said the GoFundMe. You need to come to the microphone. I agree with the woman who said the GoFundMe thing. Well, they pay for themselves. Why should... You, you need to speak right into the microphone. Why should we pay for something that doesn't bother us? I live right around the corner. I barely hear it. I hear the train louder than I hear that. Are we going to pay to cease and desist the train? It's ridiculous. It's funny because I can hear the train Did you? No, I just wanted to say he should speak. They don't bother anyone. It's on a site. It's barely any noise. I think this is ridiculous. Hi, uh, Tim Rowan at 61 Claybog Street. Uh, I want to make it very clear. I don't oppose the operation of the track in any way, shape, or form. What I am concerned with is uh, apparently uh, the, uh, the disregard for various discussions and the zoning bylaws and all the rest of it is what concerns me. It was very actually quiet weekend this past weekend, Memorial Day, because something happened. There were people there, but it was quieter for some reason. And there's some so there's there's mitigation techniques the owner of the track can make. But in order to make sure that we have that conversation and make sure all the parties are serious about the conversation, we have to have a stick 
to make sure those conversations are productive. Otherwise, we'll continue to just talk and talk and talk, and we won't get anywhere. I'm not thrilled with any more legal action. Legal actions take years to resolve. I would much more prefer some sort of uh, um, settlement and discussion with interested parties to figure out other ways, like they managed to do at the 508 uh, track in Charlton. They had a big fuss with when that went in, and somehow or other it got resolved to everyone's satisfaction to some degree. Not everyone got what they wanted there, and not everyone's going to get what they want here. But there is a path that we can have a discussion. But unfortunately, it strikes me that we seem to need the, th the threat, I hate to use the term, of further litigation to make sure we have a true constructive discussion where, s where people give and people take so that we have a, a, a settlement that, that is fair to all the neighbors in the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. Quake Walk Street. Uh, there's a big sign on the entrance of the track there that says no Brookfield officials allowed. And like the gentleman just uh, stated, you know, about uh, finding... Get right into the microphone, Gary. Find, on back finding an equitable, equitable solution. Well, that's not possible because Mr. Bird does not want to Pay any attention uh, to any rules. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, that, no. I, that is no. out of order. I don't, you know, yeah. you're, you're, you're so, attacking his uh, character and, and his motives, and I won't allow that. Yeah. So uh, uh, the, the, the thing is, is, is uh, like you said, uh, there's no noise abatement you could do, or different things like that. You, you don't want anything to do with that. And so uh, you're going to make his noise, and we're going to like it, and and uh, and it's absolutely wrong. You know, there's a lot of people that have their life's investment in a home, and this guy has spoiled it with the noise. So, first I want to respond to the people who say, it's not in my backyard, so it doesn't matter because we are a community and you know if there was a drug nest in one part of town the people in the other part of town wouldn't say well it's not our problem people should raise money in their neighborhood to solve it or if there was um i don't know i can't think of another example in my two minutes but you know we're all a community we don't say i don't i don't say i don't have children so i don't want to pay for the kids education you know we, we all have to do things together to get anywhere, especially in such a small community. However, I really heard the gentleman who said, I don't think that the legal avenue is it because you know we've already spent money in court, we don't have standing. And so I would like to offer an amendment that we use this money, and I don't know what committee I would refer this to, so you're gonna have to help me, but that we refer this to whatever committee in, in town is most likely to be able to help with either arbitration, mediation, litigation, bring in whoever you need to be able to negotiate, you know, with some power with this guy because it really is hurting so many people in town. So I don't know if that's enough of an amendment. Um, well, you'd have to you'd have to make a very specific motion to a committee. I mean, we, we have a planning board and a zoning, zoning board of appeals and, and lots of others that have been active with this for quite a while. So uh, I'm not sure that's a, uh, you'd have to be very specific about what you would want to do with that. So why don't you, if you want to write something down, uh, go right ahead and do that. You, you got another opportunity to come to the microphone and speak. Otherwise, uh, let's continue. Hi, I'm Bonnie Porter. I think this is probably a question for town council. According to the town report, the annual report, it talks about all these pending cases that there, there were at least in uh, 2022, but there were superior court cases pending regarding appeals of the district court. This particular citation, I tried to do some research on it. It took place some time ago. I don't know if the decision has been rendered on the citation that this particular petition is addressing. 
the district court has the district court made a decision on it Through you, Ms. Moderator, my name is Jeff Blake. I am uh, your town council, as you know, and I also am the one that has handled this, at least at least the second case from its inception. You are correct that there is a district court case that was an appeal of a zoning board, uh, zoning enforcement officer's um, enforcement order saying that Mr. Port, the owner of the track, had exceeded the pre-existing non-conforming use that was protected. The first case was whether or not there was a pre-existing non-conforming use. The district court found that there was. There's a second case in district court as to whether or not he's exceeded the scope of the protection. That case has not concluded. In fact, that case is still in district court. With respect to the request for an appropriation for monies to appeal a district court decision to the superior court, that can't be done under our under our laws. It will either go to an appeals court or it will go to a, uh, a appellate division of the district court. But that can't happen until there's been a final judgment, and there has not been a final judgment in that case. You may have seen a superior court case. A superior court case was brought against the property owner and the track during COVID because there were violations of COVID. We, we did get a preliminary injunction in that case and we were able to, to get safeguards in place to, to, to uh, comply with the, with the COVID restrictions. But like everything with COVID, it was, it, was, it was an evolving situation. And by the time everything played itself out, the governor had already opened up those kind of facilities. So it was short life. So that's why you saw a case in the Superior Court. Okay, but you, in, in the um, annual report, it talks about um, Superior Court case, cases related to the town's efforts to regulate motocross operations. And I'm just curious if these other cases, this particular citation, 1869 CV, well, just 257, if that has been decided in the district court, it, it has not. That one, but there's a, a later, ver, there's a later case pending as well. Okay, so the the first case has, uh, like I said, has been decided, has been decided now for years. So there's no appeal of that. 1869, that's I, I, I don't, you know, unfortunately I didn't bring okay. that number, so I, I don't know. Okay. But there's a first case in district court that determined right. whether or not it was a pre-existing non-conforming use. The court said it was. Okay. That was an appeal. The second case has is been an expansion of the use okay. and that has not been fully okay. decided. Okay. There have been a number of decisions in that case because there's been a lot of motion practice. But at this point, a final judgment has not been issued. Okay, so it's, it's premature then to talk about filing an appeal for something that hasn't been decided. Is that correct? Is there a point of order? Mine? Oh, I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, I am. Uh, I just think that the information that is coming from general, from our town council is important. Uh, so I'm allowing this to go a little bit longer just because this is a complicated matter and I think it's important for people to hear. So I, I am almost done. My patient is limited on this. So. Um, go ahead and finish answering the question, and then we're going to be done. Through you, Mr. Moderator. It, 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 I, you can't appeal the district court decision at this point. It's not a final judgment, and you can't appeal it to a superior court. Okay, thank you. Good point of order, by the way. Hi, my name is uh, Dan Plort. I'm the owner of the track. And I'd like to begin by saying uh, it's, been, uh, it's, it's been 10 years. 10 years, okay, that this has been going on. The day that I purchased the track, I had the zoning board come down and give me a cease and desist on the spot. It's been constant fighting from day one. I've tried to work with this town. The town does not want to work with me. So the fact that these okay, residents I want you to be a little that, careful about I, I, that because, I, I you, know, know. you know, I'm yes, but you were asking your explanation. Excuse me, I am the moderator, and I will stop you immediately if you want to contest me. I'm not contesting you. Good. I'm just telling you what's so, been going on. I want you to be careful about accusing the town of not working with you. Okay, okay. that's it. 
Okay, fine. I'll, then I have nothing else to say then, because okay. you don't want to listen to what I have to say I about what's happened in the last just 20 years. Be careful about of this accusing process. the town not to not to work with you. Okay, well I'm going to give you a little history then. Okay. I bought the property in 2013. All right. All I've been doing is getting cease and desist orders from the town. Okay. I've been battling the town. Okay. Nonstop for yep. 10 years. Okay. okay. The fact that they say I'm going to open seven days a week, I'm open five days a week. Okay. Five days a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the sign that's up there that says town officials and and are not allowed mm -hmm. is because I feel like I'm getting screwed on a constant basis. Mm -hmm. I'm getting, I feel like an ethics violation is going to be coming on my, on my behalf to, to the town because of all the unethical things that this town has done to me. Okay? I have won my cases. I've spent money, and the fact that the town residents are trying to put money together to appeal a decision that hasn't even been made yet, like the lawyer said, mm -hmm. there's still litigation going on. Yeah. So I'm here to defend myself and explain that I won my grandfathering case, yeah. okay? Under grandfathering, you can grow under grandfathering status, okay? okay? I've not changed the usage yeah. or anything. So all I'm saying is I oppose the citizens' petition, uh -huh. and I'm here to defend myself. Good. So that's all I have to say. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Linda Lincoln. I live at 24 Quaybog Street in Brookfield. Um, I've lived there for 42 years, and we have put up with the track for more than more years than what Mr. Plurit is saying, because there has been a previous owner. There is, we don't have any peace of mind down there. And we hear that, and he says it's open. It's five. It's open seven days a week because we have kept track of it on a calendar. And I am sure that many other residents who live on Quaybog and Pine Lane and Brunel have. And if he wants to be here in the town of Brookfield, you think maybe he could get a meeting with the neighbors and try to come to some happy medium to get along with us. And maybe we wouldn't be doing these. Um, appeal cases all the time against him, but he doesn't want to sit down with any of us and talk. He's just interested in the money that he's making up here, and he doesn't care anything about the town of Brooklyn. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi, Dan Ford. Okay. I just want to clarify something Dan said. The town had sat with him many times, or tried to sit with him many times. Can you guys hear her in the back? No. no. Could you just get a little closer to the microphone? Hi. What you have to say is very important. Okay. Maureen Mariano, Brookfield. I want to clarify what something Dan Ford said. We have sat with him many times. I'm on the zoning board. I tried to sit with him going forward. We're ready, we're willing, we're able to negotiate, mediate, sit down, have a beer, and I don't even like beer. <laughs> come on, Dan, come sit with us and we'll talk it out and we'll make it best for Brookfield. Thank you. Uh, Tim Rowan, uh, 61 Quavo again. Yeah, I just, uh, and uh, I, uh, I respect uh, uh, the owner's comments here. Unfortunately, I, I think there's either a typo on the web page or something else wrong. Because the web page clearly states the track is open noon to dusk, Monday through Friday, 10 to 6 on Saturdays, and 10 to 5 on Sundays. Which, again, is the, if there's a conversation to be had about operating hours, let's have it. But in terms of whether it's open five or seven days a week, that's just a conversation that has to happen. It appears on the website, unless it's a typo, that it's open seven days a week. And we do hear it seven days a week, as, as some of the neighbors have said. And again, we're just looking for some sort of management of the sound in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. Low noise mufflers. Yes, they take power from the bikes, all the rest of it. But plenty of people have those types because plenty of tracks require that already to be tested beforehand and all the rest. So there's just ways that can be done if we want to have a conversation to sit down. Okay. I was on the uh, 
court session on uh, May 5th of this year when the attorney for the plaintiff stated that the, his client told him the track was operating five days a week. That same day, you can look at the website of Memex 23 and see it had hours listed Monday through Sunday. So um, that's just a piece of information. Also, the judgment by Judge Ginsburg in 2017 clearly stated that you cannot expand non-conforming use. And there has been great expansion of this non-conforming use. Uh, just ask any of the residents how many more cars are going, how big the track has gotten, and this is not supposed to be allowed when it's a non-conforming use, a grandfathered non-conforming use. Additionally, Massachusetts state law said these types of zoning infractions should be adjudicated in superior court. That's all I have to say. Okay. <laughs> Chris Gorman, 32 Pine. Uh, I have a question for zoning, uh, zoning board. Um, is there a noise ordinance in that part of town? Do we have somebody that can answer that? There isn't? We don't know. We don't have it. No, no ordinance. Thank you. There is no ordinance. Moderator, in light of what town council said, it sounds like we have no merit here. So I'd like to make a motion that we postpone this indefinitely. I second. Uh, okay, the motion's been made to postpone indefinitely. That is, we're going to kill it. Uh, so is there a second? I second. There's a second. Uh, okay, so is there any debate on the motion to postpone uh, indefinitely? All those in favor of postponing this indefinitely, which will kill it, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. No. Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, it's postponed indefinitely. Uh, there's, there's no further business before us this evening. Uh, I'm going to call this motion, uh, this meeting, uh, adjourned. Thank you very much.